What's up, everybody? My name is Kay Bess, and you might recognize me from Agents of Mayhem, where I play Persephone Brimstone. You're listening to Scott Clark and the Gaming Outsider. Howdy there, Go Crew. On this week's episode, Alyssa, CB, and I talk about the morality of pirating games. Is it ever okay to do? Some of us may even fess up to some downloading-related crimes in our own past. In news, Nintendo had another indie showcase this week, and we had a surprise casting announcement for the next Sonic the Hedgehog movie. In new games, Alyssa talks about the El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron re-release for the Nintendo Switch. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to The Gaming Outsider, video game podcast to focus on our incredible community, which can be found at thegamingoutsider.com. It is Sunday, April 21st. I am your host, Zach Parkerson, and joining me this week is the Alabama's number one K-pop, K-drama influencer, the scourge of the South, the the enemy of the Confederacy, I always call her, <laughs> Alyssa White. Welcome to the show. Oh, uh, hello. I didn't expect to be first and also to have that lofty honor placed upon me, but thank you, Zach. What is the loftiest, this is why you're one of my favorites. What is the loftiest honor there? Being the K-drama influencer or being an enemy of the Confederacy? You know, I don't know which one. I love them both. Yeah, and they're so intertwined throughout history, obviously. Korea and the Confederacy. Uh, But also joining me this week, a man coming fresh from hiatus. He's refreshed. The master of time itself. The enemy of vendors at gaming conferences everywhere. (laughs) Chris Behrensmeyer, welcome back to the show. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy your stuff. That's true. Smash your dreams. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, hey, welcome. You've been uh, away a while, my friend. I know it's too long. It's been a while. I mean, things have happened. I mm-hmm. I went to the Midwest Gaming Classic. Were you? Yeah, it was. What do you? What do you collect now? Because you have a full NES library, right? Yeah. So what do you? What have that, you? That that do be done. It's been done for well, a while. Got, I know that, but uh, I mean, mm-hmm. S- Scott Scott's like that one tier level. Like he's like, I got NES done, and then he just quit. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I've got like GameCube, ColecoVision. Okay, you're no, a few other ones done. You are no quitter. You're I did a finish one. Collector. Y- you finished finish one. Is it the Wii U? Oh no. Oh, okay. I got my hands on a box copy of Jack Brothers for the Virtual Boy. Wow. Ooh. So finally knocked that one off the list. Sounds expensive, right? Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> that hurt a lot. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. Uh, didn't hurt too much. It, you still got it. it. I mean, it was it was four figures. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Well well into four figures, I will say that. Every every time I use the Jack Brother team up attack in Persona 3, I'm gonna think of you now. There you go. Aww. Yeah. So but but currently I am I am uh fairly I, I'm going fairly hard in the paint on Super Nintendo. Okay. I got less than eighty left. And then and the Nintendo sixty four after that. That would be easier, right? The N sixty four. I'm done with N sixty four. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, all right. Got a full set for that one. Jeez. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know where I'll have to go from here. I, mean, I, don't uh, know. I might have to start buying disc based stuff. Yeah, you're, you're an impressive man. I'm just trying to collect every Western game ever made, and it feels like a already a, quite a, an endeavor. And and, uh, and 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 Star Wars, Star Wars, yeah, yeah. and Star Wars. But I mean, that's that's space Western. <laughs> at, that's true. At times, no doubt. Yeah. Um. But as you could tell, Scott Clark not here. He's off in Denver. Conveniently on 420 weekend, couldn't help but notice. That's true. Oh, I mean, that's it's a, it's a high place to be. <laughs> hey, I see what you did there. <laughs> you know what? You could also be euphoric at R two V two. Two days, two days this year, Saturday and Sunday, October twelfth and the thirteenth, Rockford, Illinois. I'm sure CB will be there. Yes, oh, and this. and uh, many many of my games will be there too. For are you, you, you going to let people play them again? Yeah. I mean, come on. Not too many people are going to get a chance to play Jack Brothers on a Virtual Boy. Wow, you're going to you're going to share that with people. Yeah. Wow. That's the whole point of the collection, man. That's Let everybody so, so gracious. I do You're a I better can, person man. than me, CB. I, come on. You you got to play Web of Fire for the first time? Yeah, I do remember that. Because of me? And uh yeah. Well, we north south almost, but your copy didn't work, right? Yeah. So I did get it finally working. Oh, okay. It, it was fairly dirty. Uh, well, Confederates, right? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we have the enemy. We have the enemy of the Confederacy. The, so. 
I just fin- I just finished that manhunt show on Apple TV, so the the, the Civil War is fresh on my mind. Spoilers, guys! They catch John Wilkes Booth in that show. Oh, I know. Oh, who knew? I mean, I, history. I I would never have known. Yeah, you never. Well, he, 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 they could always pull a Tarantino. <laughs> you can never be too sure. Yes, they could. But CB, you've been too busy to play video games these past few weeks, right? Yes, yeah. unfortunately, sad. Well, hopefully, Alyssa's made up in your absence. How's FF Seven going for you? Still going pretty well. Um, I am in the. I always have trouble saying this area. The Gongaga? Gong, Gongaga. That area. And just went through... I don't want to spoil anything. Well, yeah, don't do that. Um, just went through a big segment there. Sure. So, it's chapter nine. So, I've got five chapters left. Sounds right. Yeah, there were 14. Yeah. yeah that is that is correct. I remember So, I'm still that. chugging along. I'll eventually be finished with it. It's a pretty good game. It is. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, despite all the mini games, I still really like it. Despite, I would say, because of the mini games. There's just so many, many, many games. Many, many. Yeah. Uh, well, that's fun. I've I've gone deep into Blatcher myself. Uh, this is all Scott Clark's fault because he wouldn't shut up about the game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think I've won with five different decks now. Um, I just play, play it like every day after work for like an hour. It's such a great unwind game. Uh, although, have, how okay you you've beaten the decks, but how far up the tree have you gone? Uh, do you mean like oh you mean like in terms of difficulty, or do you mean in terms of pushing past like, the antes? What once you push past the antes? Yeah, I think I've gotten up to the eleventh ante. Um, which is because because you do eight in a, as a run, and then I think I've gotten into the eleventh before. Oh, you've only made it that far in. Yeah, well, I feel like I feel like for whatever reason, whenever I do the endless mode, I always get the wall at some point, and the wall is such a hard blind boss to beat. Uh, I think the the farthest I've made is like the fifteenth or sixteenth. Well, I'm but la-dee-da. but using only three card hands. Interesting. There's there's a really derpy way. Yeah. Well, what is the way? I guess I gotta ask now. You want me um, uh, you want me to ask? I gotta ask. It yeah. well it's it's just the way there's um specifically one that you can unlock that like if you have a three card hand, uh-huh. it's like a thirty times multiplier. Oh, okay. Thirty so times. So you use that oh. one. And then there's another one. It's like, oh, multiplies by 15 if you have no discards left. Mm. So you just immediately like discard, discard. Right, right. Making sure to like change all your jokers to um, polys. Mm -hmm. And then there's a couple other ones that like are the randomizer multipliers. Oh, yeah. Where it's like some of those can get real dumb. (laughs) They can be real helpful. I had I had a card oh, yeah. the other day where every time you added a card to your deck, it added a point two five multiplier on top of it or whatever. So I just kept adding. I had like a deck of a hundred cards and a multiplier of like twenty times or whatever. That was oh. pretty cool. The really fun one is when you take away cards. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I like destroying and cards like, and making smaller decks. You're like, I've got a thirteen card deck. I have just enough cards to make it through every. Yeah, round. but if you set it up right, you know you're gonna you're gonna tear tear it up. You know, make sure they're all one suit and they're all face cards and stuff. You're just oh, scoring like it, crazy. It's a it's a fun game. I I got through with like six of the different decks, and then I was like, okay, because that's the problem. Is like once you know that formula to get mm-hmm. that far, you're just like, I'm doing the same thing again and again. Yeah, and and there is like um, roguelikes are so interesting because it's really only twenty percent skill and like eighty percent luck based on the what you get in your randomizers. So yeah. it's, it's just an interesting. But but for some reason, I'm in I'm in Balacha right now. I just can't. I can't put it down. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. I I enjoyed my time with it. Mm-hmm. I would try it, but I don't understand poker or card games at all. So I feel like I'd be dumb. Like too dumb for it. Mm, yeah. No, I I think you'd be just fine with this. I don't think poker knowledge is necessary. It, it gives you a leg up at first because you'll know the different hands you need to make. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's not essential that you know poker by any means. Okay. 
No, because this is really bad at card games. No, yeah, you don't have you don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to trick you into playing it. I was just saying. Oh no, no. I just keep hearing you guys gush about it. I'm like, I want to check it out, but I suck at card games. Well, because I I got it with my PlayStation Rewards, so it really it cost me nothing. So it's even better. It's hard to be free. That's true. It is very hard. Yeah, and then uh, outside of that, I'm still slowly playing through Grand Theft Auto V. It continues to be great. I don't really have much to add there, other than those heist missions are even cooler than I remember. But I, I don't know why another game hasn't really copied it. Just doing heists, know, like right? in terms of like casing the joint first and making your plan. That's just such a fun thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple other games, but they haven't really done it effectively. I don't feel. I feel like games usually skip the setup, and the setup yeah. is they do. fun. You just go pay, straight into payday. it. Yeah, yeah. Like pay just, just rob the place, right? And or like Kane and Lynch has a great bank robbery mission, but you know the all the setup is just a cutscene or whatever. It's it's just fun to like you know park the car yourself or decide like you know you're checking out the ventilation system to to see if it can work for you or whatever. It's just I don't know. It's just fun. You know what? Why don't you call the guys that made Lemnus Gate and be like, how about you make a game like this? There you go. Uh, oh, do you have their contact info, Zach? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure I can just pitch some games. <laughs> it's no big deal. But, but 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 that's the kind of company that, that I think could make a a game like that very, very well. Yeah. Like, here's here's the thing. Create the whole setup and then just let it run. I mean that do I think that is a cool idea. It's like almost see your plan unfold or whatever. There's a concept yeah. here. I'm gonna write this down to uh, steal this idea. To make what make, you do that. make millions. Dude, I do this all the time. I just pitch these great ideas and I'm like, I don't know anybody, so yeah. somebody make this game for me. <laughs> I mean, I would be asking for a cut of the profits if it ever gets made. If you're coming up with Dude, that I, idea. I, I see this is the problem. I'm a terrible writer. I I g I'll I'll brainstorm you ideas all day. You write it, it the free ideas. He's like George I'll, Lucas. I'll, He's an ideas man. Exactly. A terrible I just, <laughs> executor. Yeah, I just can't write for crap. It's funny. There you go, Kathleen Kennedy. Hire me. I'll 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 come up with the ideas for you. There you go. John Favreau can direct them in because he he certainly can't write a Star Wars story. See, see, this is this is going so much better. It's good. Well, or you can pitch us ideas. I will self correct it for them. You can pitch us ideas, and Zach and I can write stories. See? Yeah. There you go. Whenever you guys need an idea, just hit me up. I'll pitch you an idea and be like, go. All right. I'll try to keep that. I'll give you beginning, end, you figure the middle. Sure. Well, all right. We got this. With that pitch deck installed, let's uh, let's get over (laughs) and jump about the, talk about the news, huh? All right. Well. Before we get to the news, uh, I need to tell you guys about Ewin Racing and their gaming products. Uh, back in 2001, Ewin Racing be- originally began manufacturing seats for luxury sports cars. I can tell you I've actually sat in one of the chairs that they make, their video game chairs. Nobody sits they like are. CB does. He's a Dude, pro mm, sitter. They're stellar. <laughs> So, but in 2015, they started making gaming chairs and they were featured for the first time at E3 back in 2017. And then two more times in 2018 and 2019, they were designated as the official gaming chair for the PC gaming show. I mean, Scott, Scott has one. I don't own one, but, uh, one of these days I'm actually going to retire this chair and I actually think it's going to be fairly soon. And I'm actually going to get an Ewan racing chair. Like, I think that they're stellar. I mean, they're comfortable. I mean, I'm a big boy. They, they support me well. So. Uh, that that's always been a problem I've had is finding a, a chair that's comfortable and can fit. So uh, some of their models are built with up to a 500 pound capacity for bigger gamers like myself. I'm not that big though. <laughs> so um, they also make uh, gaming desks, floor mats, and uh, quite a few people in our community have one. We actually gave one away at um, R2V2 last year. So uh, if you're interested, we do have a 20% off code, TGO at ewinracing.com. Well, thanks for that, CB. Uh, in terms of the news, Jump Ship got announced for Xbox and PC. It was a uh, first-person shooter spaceship battling hybrid game. 
Uh, Fallout, the TV show, got a second season greenlit already. Nintendo had their April Indie Showcase this past week. A uh, sealed copy of Castlevania sold for $90,000. And of course, the big news. Keanu Reeves has been cast as Shadow in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. CB, you've been gone for a while. Are any of these stories interesting to you? I mean, clearly, John Wick the Hedgehog. Dude, I'm so in. I am too. I'm... That that's not really the story I want to talk about, but I'm I'm still amazed by that. So uh, I figure we're all interested in. It. Well, let's talk about it first. Then I'll talk about the one that like really interests me. So okay, all right, we'll count this okay. as my. I'm story, I'm, I'm still a little thunder here. Yeah, just well, because. Yeah, I'm just gonna count this as my story then, so I don't have to pick one later. But yeah, <laughs> there you go. Keanu Reeves is the, is the voice of Shadow. Uh, so mm-hmm. News broke by the John Campia show. I don't know who that human being is, but thanks, guy. Uh, you know, the movie comes out December 20th. And Knuckles, the TV show, comes out April 26th. I know we're all excited for that one. Maybe Shadow cameo, perhaps? Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. In. How, do you I, f- see, how do you feel about Keanu Reeves as Shadow? It depends on which version of Keanu we're getting. Okay, well, hopefully are, are, it's not Bram are, Stoker Dracula. That would be that would be a disappointment. Ooh. Yeah, uh, well, I mean... Do you want see, gravelly John Wick? Uh, I, I want John Wick the Hedgehog. Yes. I, I was going to say, or want, Bill and Ted Keanu, I don't, because that'd be I don't hilarious. want Point Break Hedgehog. I am a G-U-N Asian. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I, it... I love the fact that so many of these movies are getting big, like, especially video game movies, are getting big name actors attached to them. But at the same time, I enjoy them more when they have new up and comers. Sure. Mm-hmm. Look, I, I, mean, I didn't know who Alicia Vikander was. Oh, before she, she was Lara. Tomb Raider. Yeah, she loved was, it. The only thing she was in was Ex Machina, right? Yeah. Uh, she was in a couple other things. I was a fan of hers before. Oh, okay. Uh, Testament of Youth, fantastic movie based on the true story of Vera Britton. Um, amazing movie, but yeah, Ex Machina. Can't remember if the Danish girl was before or after that one. She was great in that as well. I want to say before. I think you're right. Such, such a cinephile we have on the cast. Yeah. I mean, I've got a letterbox and everything, guys. I mean. How did you like the Tomb Raider? It, oh, hold on. This is important. How did you like the Tomb Raider movie, Alyssa? You're not Alicia. I really liked it. Uh, yeah. I've watched it, I think, three times now. Okay. Great. Well, yeah. I mean, it's got Walton Goggins in it, too. I was going to say, it's got the all-important Walton Goggins as Matthias, so that's good news. It was fun, and I was uh, really bummed when they canceled the sequel. Yeah, that was weird. Because I was looking forward to more. There's been a lot of cancellations for those types of movies. Like, I'm still wondering yeah. when I'm going to get my Green Lantern TV show on HBO. Lanterns, HBO Max. Any day now, they say. I've been here on sure. any day now for eight years. Yeah. Um, I'm not losing confidence in WB, though. Yeah, yeah, I lost. Yeah. yeah. But Shadow the Hedgehog, we'll see. I mean, clear, clearly we know that Silver is going to be coming after this movie. Clearly, he says. Clearly. I mean, it's the only Hedgehog Inside left. Knowledge. Well, yeah, well, I mean, you until get, you get to, like, some of the weird offshoots. So you gotta get Rouge the Bat in there at some point. Her, Amy. Amy, yeah, Amy would be nice, very nice to get in there. Maybe it could be Metallic a little... Metallic Sonic. Girl, girl, Metal Sonic. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of... I feel like there's a lot of characters you gotta get to before Silver. Silver no, because I feel that Sil- Silver is the, the domino that leads to everything else. No, Silver is like Trunks. Because, you know, he comes in later and he warns you about an, a, a doomed future... You need the whole cast there to to repel the the doom that's coming. Yeah, okay. but that's that's what the TV shows for. I don't know. I'm getting too serious about this. Uh, but I, yeah, you need John Wick, Keanu Reeves. My probably Keanu Reeves, love him to death. I'll watch any movie he's in. He's a pretty bad actor though. Uh, I don't. We just love him because he's a wonderful person. Yeah. So I don't know how he'll do in a voice booth. I have. Uh, I'm sure he's been in animated stuff. I just. Can't, I don't know. I any. know he's done. I think two SpongeBob SquarePants movies, but they showed his face. Say, yeah, wasn't he like his own floating head in those though? Yeah, yeah. like a tumbleweed. Yeah, <laughs> but I have seen uh, fun clips on Twitter of people just doing John Wick's voice in Shadow of the Hedgehog cutscenes, 
and it totally works. It would be awesome. I'm on board. Oh, he was fun in Toy Story 4 as Duke Kaboom. Okay. Yeah, definitely did not see that. So, but, but like other, other than a John Wick style voice, nothing else makes sense for Sonic and for Shadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they come in with like anything other than that, I'm just gonna be like, I'm disappointed. No, I I need to see Shadow just go, I'm gonna need a gun. (laughs) That'd be great. He, I mean, he's, he's strapped, dude. He's, you know, uh, in his own video game, he was shooting fools left and right. So he could be. Uh, um, can you imagine instead of Keanu Reeves if they would have got the same guy that voiced uh, Master Chief, Stephen Downs? Yeah, sure. Probably a little old. For, well, Keanu's old too. What am I saying? Yeah, Keanu's in his fifties, yeah. man. Well, he moves better than I do. You see, yeah. so he doesn't look like he's in his fifties. Yeah, it's an illusion. It's because he he doesn't age until you watch him in like the last Bill and Ted. I definitely. Yeah, that's true. He he looked rough in that movie. I sure have forgot they did a new Bill and Ted. It's I think they good. purposely made him look bad, though. No, because I saw the pictures of him like on set that were taken by like paparazzi. And I'm like, bro, you need to grow the beard back. Is that? Is, oh yeah, that's what's protecting his age is the yeah. beard. Yeah, yeah. The the beard keeps the illusion. Mm. Yeah, the be- yeah the beard is very helpful. Well, that's enough ragging on America's treasure. Okay, CB, what is the story you actually wanted to talk about? Oh, Fallout getting a second season. Yeah, you told me before we recorded the startling mm-hmm. piece of information that you've seen the entire show twice already. Yes. I am addicted. It's so good. Um uh, I mean fi- finally somebody's like, you know, we're going to we're going to make a video game TV series and do it right, unlike that Halo trash. Dude, that yeah. <laughs> Were they were they refused to let people play the games? Yeah, it it just bewilders me when you have something that's like, look, it's cut and dry. Like, just follow the script, and they're like, no, we're gonna do our own thing and take our own creative license with this. Mm. Like, okay, fine, screw it up and watch how bad people get, and they did. Whereas, like Fallout, just it fe- like it feels just like a side story. Right. Uh, well, it's it's set within the universe, right? Yeah, it's just like you could be like, "Hey, look, we we just picked three random vault numbers and go," and it it feels like I'm watching a Fallout game unfold on like YouTube, like I'm watching somebody else play through it, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I can believe this happening in this universe." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and just the detail to it is awesome. I'm. I'm I'm so blown away by the amount of like Easter eggs and references to everything. Um the way the show ends, it definitely feels like they definitely did make one ending of one of the games very canon. Okay. So um I'm I'm excited because season two is clearly going to take place in New Else. Vegas. You think so? I would, um, I would be surprised Todd Howard would allow his ego would allow that to happen. You know, they, they, I feel like they pretend ju- that New Vegas didn't happen. Judging yeah, by the way the show goes, there is no choice but. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. <coughs> yeah, but I, mean, I, um, I really like the two episodes I saw. I will, I'm sh- I'm sure I will watch the rest. Uh, so I, you know. I, yeah, I'm down for but season two. There's there's also this beautiful marriage between the show and the game, like where they're taking little pieces of information, expanding on the lore and filling in some of the like different little pieces that they can. Like, oh, I never knew that that is why that is. Okay, I don't want to give spoilers yeah, away. No, yeah, you so. say you can't. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that for you as a fan that 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 is working, uh, and it's nice. Oh, sure, yeah. In such a widespread positive word of mouth, you know, people are playing the games, uh, you know, way more now, and it's just uh, it does make you really sad about the Halo show, about what could have yeah. been. Mm-hmm. Because well, it, and, if you take just... care of the fans, they're going to tell everybody in their lives to watch the show. You know. Well, it. 
it also brings to light like so many other shows that had been talked about or rumored or at one point in time in the works Mm -hmm. that with the proper team and dedication that they could have done something. Cause I remember at one point in time there was talking that like the halo TV series was going to be done with Peter Jackson helming it. Right. Yeah. I remember yep. That. And I'm like, Oh look, a person who cares about story and lore and background. So it just, it infuriates me. The fact that that could have happened, but they're like, no, we're just going to do this. But this is the first time that, um, as far as like, TV, like movie, like basically any type of media other than actual video games that are tied to video game properties. It it makes me hopeful for the future because I still. The Super Mario Brother movie was kind of eh to me. I know the Sonic ones were they're good. I like but I like to me, the Sonic this is movies, like, but they're, they're good. But to me, this mm-hmm. is like. Right there at the top, right? Like, the only other thing I can think of is the Alicia Vikander Tomb Raider. Oh, what about The Last of Us? Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I keep forgetting. Well, I'm I'm still nervous for a second season on that one. Well, I'm, ner- I'm, I'm nervous for the actress involved. You know. Yeah. The Last of Us Part 2 is the superior video game, so it should make for the superior season of television. I'm I'm hoping so, but I'm still nervous because I don't know how they're going to do that. Whereas with this, they could do just about anything, but as long as they stay within the constraints of that universe, mm-hmm. it'll work. Well, yeah, I think I think that's a why it's a fun way to do this of it just being a story set in the universe. I think that's a cool way yes. to do it instead of being a direct adaptation. Or even I even like what Twisted Metal did, where they're just like, let's just uh, take all the things you know about it and we'll reshuffle it our way. Is cool. But it, but it was actually mm-hmm. respectful, unlike Halo. I can't believe the Twisted Metal TV show was more respectful of its source material than Halo. I know. <laughs> but such the, as it yeah, is. I, I guess I'll put the Twisted Metal one like right in the middle. Yeah, no, because it's I not, keep I'm not trying to say yeah. it's great. Don't get, me, don't get me twisted. It's just a fun show. <laughs> I'll see oh what you did God. there. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was Scott Clark dad joke bad level. Yeah. Someone has to bring him when he's not here. Oh. The old man. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm hanging there's all these stoners down here. <laughs> Look at me, Denver. It's amazing. <laughs> uh what about you, Alyssa? Is there a, what new story is are you intrigued by this week? Well, Nintendo had their April indie showcase this week. Um I don't know if you guys were interested in any of the titles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you Why don't you tell yeah. us? Why don't you tell us what you're excited about, Alyssa? You know, uh, refined self. The personality test game looks really interesting to me. Okay, sure. Um, I should have known because uh, when you play, it's basically the entire thing's a personality test. It tells you your personality at the end. Um, which I mean, you could obviously choose different choices. Sure. To kind of yeah, but. I want to know who I am, so I would definitely play that. Um, the rest, I don't think I don't. I, I watched the showcase, but I guess I somehow missed yeah. this refined game. Um, uh, the rest don't really look like my cup of tea, to be honest. Not even Little Kitty Big City. Uh, maybe, maybe as long as something as long as something happens to the kitty. Well, like something bad. Come on, permanently. They, they can't. No, there. We exist in an era where no one is going to kill a cat or a dog in a sh- in a story or show ever again. I hope not, because it makes me sad. I, but yeah, I would play Little Kitty Big City. I, I will. I will openly agree with Zach on this one. I have a feeling that you would you would see a baby destroyed before you would see a dog <laughs> or a cat. Yeah, people people really care about uh, Mommy. animals right now. Yeah, Dead Space 2 already did the baby thing, so... Did you straight up you murder toddlers by the hundreds in that game? You do. It's pretty cool. You stomp on them, oh. and it's... What a game. I mean, you don't even think about it at the time until afterwards. Who doesn't? I think you, I think you do kill babies in Dante's Inferno, though, right? They have, like, little scythe arms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in um, Catherine. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. The baby, baby is a boss. about that. Yeah. That was a great game. Well, think from uh, Scott's loving this. 
for for me from this list, I was I found myself strangely intrigued by Yars Rising because it's just such an interesting reimagining mm-hmm. of the Yars property from Atari. And Way Four being involved means it will be a good Gear Gata game at the very least. Um, but but I actually think it just looks cool in the way she has like the Yars armor or whatever is going on there. You see, it's a little bit yeah. little little tinge of Magical Girl energy to me, which uh, which I found quite enjoyable. Uh, recently with this way madness lies but then uh otherwise duck detective the secret salami hell yeah dude. oh i forgot about that one yeah that one intrigues me because i love detective this hard games and movies and stuff like that so and i i, I love some hard-boiled noir and if you're gonna take mm-hmm. it but instead it's a duck in the lead role or whatever it's, hell yeah dude sign me up and i think it's really nice that um they're they're just letting you know in press materials and stuff like say hey it's like a three or four hour game you can knock it out really quickly. I was like, so nice to let me know that. Now I know I can be excited for the secret salami. And solve duck that crimes. That sounds dirty. It does sound dirty. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was thinking. I will, I will say that that is actually the only game on this entire list. And I'm like, eh, I might check it out. Okay, so we're all, you know, duck detective wannabes. I guess so. Yeah. I really thought CBB in wanting to play the TMNT game for whatever reason. But I don't know. Do you like the Ninja Turtles? Am I misremembering this? No, I love the Ninja Turtles. It's mm-hmm. just I love the first three games, right? Mm-hmm. So you tapped out. I mean, like I tried. Well, we j- we just had like Shredder's Revenge and the other one, mm-hmm. and I'm just uh, you're turtled out. I want I yeah. want something new. Give me a new IP. Sure. Look, man, Something there. fresh. Stop beating the dead horses. I mean, the last Ronin is coming at some I point. Know. Well, isn't well, supposedly still is beyond good and evil too. But <laughs> sure, I have a lot more faith that the last Ronin game will happen. I so do I. But but, but speaking of uh, no new ideas, I mean, they're doing a last Ronin movie game. They're doing a sequel comic mm-hmm. series right now. They're really. Just stomping that thing into we're the milking ground. It. Yeah. yeah, they're they're on hard. It's it's unbelievable. You know, but I I, literally. I get more excited for new IPs or new IDs, even if they're small, than another iteration of a franchise that's been around since I was a child. I get that. Yeah. Sure. Of course. Well, that was the news. Um, Let's uh, before we talk about the new games, though. Just a reminder: we are an independently funded podcast, which means we must pay for our podcast hosting services and website all on our own. Which is why we have a Patreon page where fans can contribute monthly to help offset the cost of production as well as give back to the community. If you'd like to help, you can do so at Patreon.com/slash/TheGoCast. Patrons at the three dollar month level uh, get some bonus episodes. Uh, there's a huge backlog of probably hundreds of episodes, right at this point. I think for sure, yeah. 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 CB, could you let us know what is currently available for members? Oh, man. If well, you, if you remember, have... I don't know, it's been a while since you've been on the show. It's It's been a bit, so this list feels slightly fresh to me. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth spoiler cast with Scott, Zach, and Brandon Smith. Uh, as well as some upcoming stuff, we got a trade-off. Kevin and Scott, they're still playing games. Uh, Paper Mario N64 and Evolution World of Sacred Device on the Dreamcast. It's an okay game. Uh, also, a break the seal, the Lone Ranger, or Sands of Time. Scott Scott doesn't know which way they're going to fall on that one yet. Allegedly. I think they. I think we, didn't last week you two decide you're going both. Yeah, I think we landed. You're going to play both, both, and then you know get some bang yeah. for the buck. Okay. because of the weight. But uh, you know, Scott claims he was going to finish Sands of Time this weekend on his trip mm-hmm. on a Steam Deck. I don't know if I believe him. He did. He did take the Steam Deck back from me. Well, that's good. A good first step. So you should give me that scene back forever. <laughs> well, I borrowed it from him, and I f- unfortunately still didn't get time to play what I wanted to play. So when he gets back, I might steal it back from him. <laughs> what a loving relationship! <laughs> but yeah, you can uh, find all that and sign up for yourself at Patreon.com/slash/TheGoCast. And with that, let's get into the games we've actually been playing. Before I let you talk about what you've been playing, 
Let's talk about what's coming out. Manor Lords, a medieval simulator, comes to PC April 26th. Sandland, based on the recently deceased legend Akira Toriyami's manga, Toriyama, not Toriyami, uh, <laughs> manga Sandland, comes to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, and PC April 26th. A uh, interesting looking kind of horror visual novel, novel, horrific Xanatorium, comes to all consoles and PC April 26th. Uh, Jiggling Butt Simulator Stellar Blade comes to PS5, <laughs> April 26. Top Spin 2K25 makes its grand return from many years away. Uh, the Tennis Simulator coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and PC, April 26. Braid Anniversary Edition, a remake of the classic game that kind of kickstarted indie games in general, or at least, you know, was one of those forerunners. Coming to all consoles, PC, as well as iOS and Android, April 30th. Front Mission 2 Remake hops off of Switch and onto PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and PC, April 30th. Sea of Thieves, another Xbox exclusive, coming to PS5, April 30th. It's kind of weird. There is uh, exclusive content you can get on the PlayStation version that seems kind of like a slap in the face of the Xbox fans, if you ask me. Uh, Endless Ocean Luminous comes to Switch May 2nd as an indication that Nintendo is officially out of things to milk for the Switch. And Sklash, a uh, one-hit kill, kills you uh, samurai game, because of PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and Switch May 2nd. And then you can vroom vroom your motorbikes in MotoGP24, coming to all consoles and PC May 2nd. CB, I'm going to keep focusing on you because you've been away a while. What game on this list is catching your attention? Kind of want to pick up Front Mission 2 Remake. Okay. I love Max. Mechs are cool. Uh, I'm, I'm they on, are. I'm on board for mechs. I like, uh, especially the kind of industrial mechs, which Front Mission's got going on, more than I do like the Gundam mechs, where they're kind of high flying robot boys. I don't know how to describe. I it. mean, I, l- I love me some Evangelion. So yeah, no, I, I understand the appeal. I'm just saying, I like it where like it they look like these heavy pieces of machinery. Actually, that's a good point. Why have we never got a good Evangelion game? Oh boy, I don't. Um, well, you've got a lot of games that kind of borrow the themes from Evangelion. Yeah, but give give me an Ava and let me fight the angels, man. Do you not think, CB, that the very idea <laughs> of of like making the action feel cool would kind of undermine the narrative themes of Evangelion? Don't care. Okay, I want to be well. There. But at least you're but honest. Can you imagine like see, but seeing it from inside the cockpit though. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, yeah, they would have to have some way to make you feel the horrors of what you're doing, right? I've not seen all of Evil. Yeah, uh, so I have. I haven't times. seen any of it. I'm sure. I know. God, I need to I'm that. so disappointed in you both. Look, man, I've never so mad. The only place that has it right now, you can stream it. It's Netflix. And I've heard no. you not watch that version. Right. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that makes me mad. The, like that's the only way people can consume that as media because it, it's such a bad version. That's what I hear. Um, and also, mm-hmm. like my Weebery is in video games. I watch like one anime show every three years. You know, it's, it's not. I don't watch a yeah, lot, but I feel that it would be very up your alley. I'm confident it would be. You know, it's a major inspiration on Yoko Taro, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. but- so yeah, Front Mission Two remake for sure because mechs are badass. Sure, but Sea of Thieves, I really like. This is my own dumb brain. Mm-hmm. I want like them to release like a map, like a, not a map, but a sail pack where they put the triangle, square, X, and circle. Yeah, the symbols on the yeah. sails, but you can only get it on the Xbox side. Well, that would be funnier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like cross all the colors, so it's like. A a blue triangle. I mean, they really could just make every console have its own flag, and then you could have the console wars for real out in the open seas. I know. Oh, that'd be a brilliant idea. Yeah. Oh, but then they, I suddenly just thought about running like Sea of Thieves on a Switch. <laughs> well, it, it is coming to Switch, right? At some point, eventually. But I'm just yeah. like I. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, I don't know. For some reason, it feels cringy. Yeah, I understand. Well, at least it's not. At least they're not trying to get Hi-Fi Rush on there. I feel like that would be bad because you need that consistent mm-hmm. sixty frames for the rhythm stuff. Yeah. What but, about you guys? What do you want to play? 
yeah, Alyssa, what are you interested in here? Well, to no one's surprise, uh, horrific, blah, if I could speak, horrific Xanatorium, it just, I don't know if it'd be, you know, great, but it's, it, the trailer's intriguing enough that I want to check it out. Um, it looks like it's kind of hinting at some horror, but you don't really get any in the trailer. And it's also the setting also. Yeah. Um, but then I want to play Stellar Blade. I'm just afraid I'm not good enough to play Stellar Blade because <laughs> it's not what it looks like in the trailer. Um, because you've said it, it plays more like Sekiro. Yeah, the uh, combat does. And, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm good enough for that. I have to get good. I agree. I, I think the trailers missold what kind of action it was. But I do appreciate that it's a Korean development team making a single player game. Right. We don't get a lot of those. So I also want to support that. But I'm just like, I don't know if I'm a good enough gamer to play this game. <laughs> but it looks amazing. Well, I'll be sure to check it out in your set. That's definitely the game I'm most excited about this week. Uh, very much. Like, I'll live vicariously through you. I'll be the I'll be the Korean fan that week. Uh, Send me a fan of the jiggly butt, please. Of course, uh, a fan. I, Send me see, a video. Like, I, I'm I'm so confused by this because I I haven't I didn't watch the trailer for this one. And you're like it plays like Sekiro, but Zach's like a jiggle butt simulator, and I'm like, what kind of Sekiro are we playing? <laughs> yeah, man. Well. It, it looks it, it the trailers really make it look like a near automata knockoff to be they, honest it does yeah um, with with even more emphasis on the sexiness of the protagonist but but uh when i played the demo cb it, yeah it is very much like rest at an area to reset the enemies and gear xp from killing enemies and a lot of one on one fights with difficult en- enemies but it's like sekiro because parrying is a huge part of it parrying and dodging but it is Every trailer for the game really does feel like it. I, I assumed it was going to have a Devil May Cry like combat system. That's what I thought as well. So, so a Souls like jiggle butt simulator. There's a lot of jiggling butts, yes. <laughs> There's also some more platforming than I expected, but I wonder if that's just to have things to make her jiggle. Yeah, it sounds Possible. correct. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not afraid of how, you know, sexy the main character is. But. The game itself is very, very fun. I did not want the demo to end. It had nothing to do with her butt, I swear. Sure. I, pr- I promise. There's other ways it was to like look at butts. Only was 5%. there a cowboy hat in there somewhere, too, to like just make the trifecta oh for God, you? Yeah, she throws on a cowboy hat, start jiggling that butt. I'm not going to make a lot of progress in the game, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's hard to play one hand. Hat goes on, hat goes off. Yeah. I mean, when when Tifa showed up in FF7 in her cowgirl outfit, I just was like, I don't I can't, I, I don't want, I can't have the game progress now. Uh, but outside of the the sexy game, I think Splash looks really cool. This kind of two D it does look cool samurai game, uh, and I and if it retains the price point because on on Steam it's only a nine dollar game. Oh wow! So if it's cheap on consoles as well, I'll definitely pick it up. It's just the the like one hit kill combat, you know, a little Bushido blade energy going on there. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, something about that makes the samurai action feel more uh, vers- uh, visceral, I guess. I do like its art style. Yeah. yeah, it's a gorgeous art style. Definitely a gorgeous looking game. So yeah, hopefully I'll be talking next week about Sklash, which uh, is not a good name. But no. yeah, the names. Yeah, they could have done better. It doesn't roll off the tongue. Sklash. Why not just I don't know Samurai Slash, whatever. Doesn't matter. Alyssa, you're playing. Mm-hmm. You're playing a game <laughs> that I played like over a decade ago. Uh, yeah, but you're playing the HD remaster on Switch of El Shaddai: Ascension of the Metatron. Although they call it an HD remaster, but I would like to note it was on PS3 and 360. It was already HD. Yeah, um, I never got the chance to play it on 360 and PS3, so that's why I wanted to play it because I would always see it. I'd go to like GameStop, I'd see it in the used game section, but I never picked it up for some reason. Um, I can't tell you if. The graphics have really been that upgraded. I mean, it looks stunning. It's a very unique art style because, I mean, it's not a singular art style. That's why uh, it switches between different uh, uh, visual modes and styles. But I can't tell you if it's, like, better quality than the Xbox 316 PS3. I'm assuming. but um, I, I would assume if it is, and um, I would assume it is slight since the Switch just... Is the yeah, power as a PS3, you know? 
Yeah, I, I would assume it's just a slight variant. I remember um, the frame rate being pretty rough on PS3. So if the frame rate is steady, then that's already an improvement. Uh, I have not had any issues with the frame rate okay. so far, so um, that's good. Frame rate's good. Um, I'm really enjoying the story and uh, the combat. The story is basically, I think you're pretty much Jesus, but he goes by the name Enoch. <laughs> yeah, it, Because they're like, he has thousands of names in it, so it's like Yeshua, Yahweh, stuff like that. Yeah. But we're gonna call him Enoch, and it's got like super, super cool guy, Lucifer. Oh, yes. Lucifer. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, he narrates the game. He also is your save point. But first you have to listen to him tell, talk to God about your progress beforehand. And for some reason, this is 14,000 years ago, but Lucifer has a smartphone. Yes, I remember that. Yes. Um, well, you know, but, God's got a, he's got a jumpstart on technology. That That's true. They they just didn't share it for 14,000 years. Sounds like something God would do. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but one thing I love about this game is the fact that you don't have a health meter. The only way you know you're taking damage or you're close to death is the fact that Enoch is wearing this weird, like, it's not even a shirt. But it's like this white, it's not a bandage, but it's white armor, but it shows plenty of his chest. And then blue jeans with some of the white armor over it. So, if you get Enoch down to just, you know, being shirtless, wearing jeans, you're about to die. Yes. That is your only indication. Which I think is pretty cool that, you know, there's, there's not actually a health bar. You have to pay attention to the character's wardrobe. Yeah, I'm a big um, fan of that. That's cool. That's good stuff. Yeah, it's a really cool uh, mechanic. And the combat's very simple. You only use, you know, basically the X button on the Switch to attack. And then uh, the R bumper to guard. I mean, you only use four bu buttons total in this entire game. Right. Yeah. It's, so it's a very simple control scheme, but you do have to master it. And uh, I don't know. I'm really digging it. I don't want to say too much about the story because I myself don't know much about the story because I'm just like watching it as it unfolds. But you're basically sent to defeat six fallen angels and you have to go through a tower to defeat the angels and each floor of the tower is a different you know setting it's just really cool it's something that you know i don't think would really be made today no definitely not at this budget level no one would take a chance yeah on something like this and i was pleasantly surprised to see it you know pop up on the switch this year um Really glad, though, it did, because I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, I don't think everyone's going to like it, especially if you're pretty religious. You might have some issues with it. Because, yeah. I mean, it's not sticking close to religion by, by any means. Yeah. But uh, the thing I remember the most is its distinct visuals, because uh, I think it had some mm -hmm. Okami people involved, which is also a very distinct looking yeah. video game. But uh, the... Um, the the vibes, for lack of a better word, yeah. are what I remember most of El Shaddai, because each area are, looks pretty unique and it does, yeah. And when you jump to those like two uh, D areas, they do a lot of creative stuff there mm -hmm. as well. I love those air those sections. Yeah, like any, you'll see. Any, what was that? Anytime a, a game uh, mix and matches three D and two D, I'm always a fan of that. It's a fun thing to do. Yeah, it's stunning here. Like I've. Loved it every time I switched to 2D and you're like running across or doing platforming and you see the background and Lucifer's making comments. It's just, I don't know, this game is so unique. The only thing I have an issue with is the fixed camera when you're platforming. Oh, sometimes yeah. it'll shift when you're jumping. Like you're in the middle of a jump, it shifts, you miss the platform. But luckily, you pretty much start back from right where you started. You don't lose too much progress. It's just a little, you know, you have to recalculate after you figure out the fact that the camera's going to adjust when you're jumping. And occasionally, like, when I've been battling, an enemy will spawn behind me, but I don't realize they're behind me until they start attacking me. Mm. So the fixed camera is the only thing that's been really an issue for me. Um, other than that, I haven't had any frame rate issues. I haven't had any issues with the audio or anything. I've really enjoyed the combat. I like the 
lack of a health bar and the fact that you have to pay attention to the character's wardrobe and even some of the enemies have the same uh, mechanic if they're clothed. Um, the art style, amazing. Definitely. It's just, I think it's a game you have to like, you have to be interested in what is gonna unfold and the premise and everything because it's not gonna appeal to everyone. The story is definitely not going to appeal. It's weird. It's weird, I'll tell you that. I really like it. I like that it took a chance, and I'm glad that you can play it on Switch now, um, since it was a 360 and PS3 game. You can play it on Steam as well, but, you know, Switch is only on Switch as a current console. But yeah, uh, if it sounds interesting to you, you've never played it, I would say pick it up. I don't think there are that many improvements with this version, though. I look to see, and really it's just an HD remaster. You don't get extra content really besides when you finish the game you get a story with lucifer that i think you read i don't think you play it i think you read it oh is that new um, i don't i don't remember if yeah it they was in the original. It, uh the press kit said it's a new edition so you get a story with lucifer after you finish the game which i have not finished it so i have i can't comment on the story at the moment but yeah i I'm- think that's the only new edition besides the up uh, at the HD graphic uh, bump, but I'm I'm still surprised because I I forgot about this like little weird quirky time in the 360 era yeah. when there was like some religious games that came out. Uh huh. Because you had mm-hmm. this Dante's Inferno. Uh, this is around the same time that Dark Siders came out. Yeah, a lot of and Christian. There was another game, a lot of Christian. Yeah. So, like yeah. there was like a huge amount of like Christian. Even theme. uh, even Bayonetta is about angels and demons. That's yeah. True. So it's yeah. all like right around this one pocket yeah. of time. That is a good point. Huh. Yeah, because uh, I mean, right in the title, like Metatron, the voice of God. Yeah. Well, uh, so yeah. No, you're right. That is weird. I wonder what that was about. Oh, I, no. I don't know. It's It's just like. Because I, I I just double checked and everything. I'm like, yeah, like all these games came out within like a one year period. Uh well I'm glad you like it Alyssa because I I really I thought it was okay uh it's just it's kind of a repetitive game yeah I will say it is repetitive like I've noticed it's getting repetitive and again I'm not finished with it so by the end I might you know my opinion might shift yeah and it, 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 because I am noticing the repetition and maybe it was a mindset thing maybe it was but I don't think so I think it was just a repetitive game because you don't really like there's not like a lot of new things thrown at your way you know it's no it's kind of that and simple. it's a very linear game too yeah which is which is fine also a product of mm-hmm. that era uh, back when they actually had the gumption to make linear games every now and again but I just remember yeah. that you know they don't add like anything new to the combat really it's just the one kind of no. system and uh you get three different weapons and that's it yeah I do remember, I think there's a button to do a cool charge to the weapons uh you can purify your weapons yeah, purify, that's you what press it is. uh on switch you'll press you'll press the uh l bumper yeah. to purify it which makes it deal more damage which you can still use it once it's tainted mm-hmm. by the darkness but it doesn't it's not as effective so you want to purify it when it you know turns orange which means it's tainted and really, I think it's just an excuse to have a cool animation because he always—it's always cool yeah. the way he cleans. It's basically like a samurai cleaning the blood off his blade. Yeah. Except he's cleaning demons off of his weapons. It just looks cool every time. It does, yeah. So, but again, yeah, I think that's just a, like you said, just a reason to have a cool animation. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'm glad you like that. Uh, we we got that one from PR Hound, I believe. So do so. You recommend? Are you recommending it or tentatively? I. I'd recommend it so far if if you're up for a weird game, if you're up for, you know, something that is from a different era of gaming um, that maybe you didn't experience before, and if it sounds interesting to you, um, play it. If it sounds like something you would not be into, you're not going to be into it. Uh, or if you've already played it and you just don't have the desire to play it again, there's really nothing new here to entice you to play it again. Mm-hmm. So, I would say if you want to play it, it sounds interesting, give it a shot. If you've already played it or you just it doesn't sound like it'd be for you, it's not going to be for you, so you know. Right. It's Whichever side of the camp you fall on. 
So it's it's kind of you know it's a divisive uh, answer there. Right. So just do I guess do your own homework. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's recommended if you want to play if you're interested in it. If you're not interested in it or if you've already played it, you might want to pass it. Understood. Well, we do have a little cameo appearance from Scott Clark as he did a couple uh, of pre-recorded interviews with Mark Zemanski. Let's uh, listen to those right now. All right. I'm sitting here with Mark Zemanski. He's got a couple games to tell us about, but first we're going to start with the first one. Uh, you've been playing Let's Revolution mm -hmm. on the PS5 uh, from the developer Buck and publisher Hawthorne Games. Um. Looking at this game real quick, uh, I, I was kind of like, this kind of looks like solid, I mean, not solitary, but Minesweeper. Yes, and that's exactly what it looks like, right down to the numbers and the corner of the card. Uh, so, okay, you know, much like Minesweeper, it, whereas Minesweeper, that number indicated how many connecting spots had a bomb in it or a mine in it. This one tells you how many spots have a road in it. Okay, and the road could mean anything. It could mean an enemy. It could mean an open space. It could mean a a helper spot where somebody comes along and gives you more ammo, or you can buy an improvement, unlock something, things along those lines, or the king, which is what you're actually looking for to beat the game. Okay. So rather than dangerous things, it could just mean about anything. It could mean about anything. So you have to use deductive reasoning, a little bit of luck, a little bit of risk. And uh, and hope that you find the right stuff, uh, but it does get easier as you go along because not only is it like Minesweeper, it also has roguelite elements in it. Okay, so so like progressing like weapons and armor and things like that, or weapons, yes, health, armor, no, health, yes. So um, okay, but let's say you you start a run, you unlock a few things, you improve your health, you get a new weapon. If you die before you reach to the end, you start at square one. And the only benefit from unlocking those things is now they are available to you on future runs. Uh, okay. Like, like the, the likelihood of getting those elements is increased. Okay, so now, so now we, we've, we've kind of mixed in a little bit of Binding of Isaac into uh, Minesweeper. Yes. So, okay, I, I can dig it. I, I will say I do love the art style of this. Indeed, it's a lot of it, fun. Yeah, it, it's it's very it's it's very bright. It's vibrant. Mm -hmm. It it actually does look like it'd be an absolute blast to play. It, so about like how how far into this have you got? Have you made it all the way through it? All right. So you don't really roll credits on this game. Uh, you oh you, okay. After you beat beat the game once, uh, it, you start back over. You can use the same character. They offer you six different characters. Each has their own playing style. So two of them are brutes. Two of them are uh, stealth, and two of them are magic. And each of them have okay. a little nuance, so they're not the exact same character. And it, it adds a new challenge, where you start off with the brute character, it gets a little bit easier to get through it. If you want to start making it a little more difficult for yourself, you switch over to one of the stealth characters. And that's where it gets really challenging, because those stealth characters don't attack very well. You're actually at a detriment if you go down a road and you run into an enemy. You can't attack very well, your health is lower than the brute's, so it's just a different way to try to beat the game. And then as you go along, those stealth characters can start unlocking weapons and better, more health, things like that. But it's still, that's not how you're supposed to beat it when you choose those characters. You're, okay. You're better off just avoiding all the enemies and doing your best to just try to find the king. Uh, my favorite was the brute. It made the game a little bit easier for me. That's my style of playing. And plus, when you use the brute, you are rewarded for defeating the enemies and you're it's easier because you have a higher attack level but you also aren't as scared to unlock or to go to the different uh spaces on the board Be and when you hit those spaces on the board you get more unlockables whereas if you're doing stealth you're trying to avoid the road just to find the king so there you and those stealth characters you're not getting as many unlockables as you do with the brute so it you have your choice of how to make it harder or easier okay i can really dig on that so I mean, is there, there are there any other like interesting quirks about the game, or just um, the music is really nice. 
they offered a soundtrack on Steam. I didn't purchase the soundtrack, but the music is is fitting. It's a little bit mysterious. It's a little bit adventurous. It changes depending on the location that you're at, the character that you choose to play as. So there are a lot of different options. You don't get too bored with the music. It's really nice. The sound is whimsical. Like the sounds that the king makes are kind of like simlish ish. Okay. Um, they, they don't actually talk. It's all done through comic bubbles, and uh, but they okay. do make noises. And they're fun. It makes you want to beat him because he makes annoying little noises and his thought bu- his talk bubbles say things like "You didn't actually win. You cheated." Stuff like that. So, oh, so I just want so to come the, back so and beat the him typical again. annoying. Yes. Nice. All right. Well, that was um, Let's Revolution. Uh, like I said, you were playing it on PS5. Yep. Uh, we did get a copy for, uh, that was provided to us by Stride PR, so thank you to them. Uh, it's also available on Xbox, Switch, and PC. That's right. Uh, this would be a perfect game for a handheld. Uh, I picked PS5 because I hadn't played on it very recently, and I thought it was a good excuse to, to hook it up and see how it played. Uh, but that one really is best suited, I think, for a handheld. Something that you can just take on the go, pay for, play for about 10 minutes, put it down when you're done. Perfect. I actually might wind up picking this up on the Switch because I'm I'm a huge Minesweeper fan. So it plays perfectly as All a board right. game. Loved it. Nice. Okay. Well, you've also been playing Shadow of the Depth on PC, yes. and uh, this one is also very much up my alley. Um, developers Chili Room, as well as published by Chili Room. Uh, this one looks very much like a top-down dungeon crawler. Yep. Uh, and it is also a roguelite. So if you did you play Children of Morta? Yes, uh, not not as religiously as Scott did. Yeah. So, but I'm I, I mean I, I I'm a huge fan of like uh, Binding of Isaac, but also things that just I like to smash. Yes. So, so this one is very much like Children of Morta with a lot less story. So you go into it, it tells you why you're there and why you want to defeat the monsters and the, the bosses, but that's it. Whereas Children of Morta was a little bit more, you got more depth of story as you played the game. This one, you just get plopped into the dungeon, you kill the monsters, it's bloody, gory, fun, uh, top down, like you said, and then you you can make your character stronger and stronger as you go along each run you get. Uh, okay. This was early access, so I only played through the first two bosses. I had a blast, CB. It was so much fun. Oh. Um, even without the story, I didn't even care. I was just in the dungeons. I was looting. I was getting power ups. I was, I had it set on easy. And let me tell you, if you put it on easy, you're gonna breeze through this thing. Uh, I, okay. I didn't die until I made it to a boss. So, uh, to to me, this this very specific game and style of game almost seems like a modern iteration of like Gauntlet. Yes. From back in the day. Yes. Which is something that like has been severely lacking in my life. So seeing something like the the moment I watched the trailer for this, like I was immediately like, this looks like a modern update for Gauntlet, not like that Dark Legacy crap one. Mm-hmm. So I like this is definitely one that is going to be on my radar, and I pray that this comes to console as well. So I'm 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 like. Is, is is are you just like locked into like one character like how many different characters are for this or no, there are five or six different characters and this was also the similarity to the children of morta for me the character okay. you start off with has a sword at the easiest one to control you don't have to get too close to the enemies uh you can really power that sword up and start defeating enemies with one swing things like that and then you have another character who throws the has a bow and arrow so you can attack from a farther distance but they don't have the health that the, the sword carrier has. Uh, another one is uh, like blades. I'm, I'm waving my hands on the screen like the people on the podcast can see me again. Uh, but they have blades, and you so you have to attack really close up. Those attacks are super strong, but you are opening yourself up to counter damage, of course. Okay. Uh, so and there's one other character that I'm drawing a blank on right now, but they eat caster. Uh, perhaps, perhaps I, I there was one character that I didn't quite unlock. Uh, playing as far as I did. I just didn't have enough uh, gold or, or whatever the currency is that you build up to unlock the next okay. character. Um, so there might be one. Uh, but it, you have your choice of style. 
If you like to be melee, you'd get the guy with the sword, just go in, guns a-blazing. If you want to take your time, you want to be a little bit more strategic about it, you get that with the bow and arrow. The problem with the bow and arrow that I had was when I got to the boss, because the bosses are pretty strong, and uh, they have a multitude of attacks. So it's better off just getting up close, swinging him a few times, and then dodging his counterattack so that you're still close to him, and you can start swinging the sword at him again and wear him down. Okay. And as as far as like the the roguelike elements, like I, I'm guessing additional health, things like yep. that. Yep. And the the unlike Let's Revolution, when you start a new run, you've carried over everything that you've taken, uh, with the exception okay. of uh, the the sword and shield that you carry for the first character, the main character that I played as, mostly. Uh, it, that starts from square one again. However, your levels are already higher, so you're going to level up all your uh, weapons and stuff as you play a lot quicker than you would say at the very first run when you first load up, loaded up the game. Okay. So yeah, I'm. I, I unfortunately the PC that I'm currently using kind of sucks. So I'm. Mine I'm hoping to replace that soon. Mine isn't so. all the uh, like bells and whistles. I don't grab the AAA games when I have to do it on PC. So this one should play okay. Okay. That that is promising for those of us who are uh, lacking in the PC department. So, because the the one I'm currently using is about uh, twelve to fifteen years old. Oh, uh, maybe maybe it won't play I, too well for you. Let's, it was <laughs> to it see. was top of the line then. Yes. So, but yes, it's. I mean, it's well. I, I guess it's not quite that old because it, it was Oculus ready at the time. Oh. What? So, but it was like the first one. So, but yeah. Um. But yeah, Shadow, moving back, Shadow of the Depth. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I really love this art aesthetic yes. too. Like, it is gorgeous. I, I, and I love the developer. Aggressive. They set up uh, the early access, and that's how I played it. They had a link right on the main menu that said report issue, report a bug, which I thought was great. A lot of them, you know, they give the early access, but it's kind of difficult to find them when you want to say, hey, I found this issue. And I did actually find an issue where. The, uh, I got to the first boss, and he attacked as soon as I hit a certain button combination, and the the game just went to, into slow motion. I couldn't move my character around. His attacks weren't hitting me. It's kind of weird, but just backing out to the main menu and then hitting start again, continue, I should say, I was right back in the room with the boss. It was like nothing happened. Um, so okay. it, it was easy to get around, but I still was able to report that, which I appreciated very much. That gives me a lot of respect for those uh, developers and helping them to make the game better so that when they do release the full launch it'll be ready to go and it'll be a great game yeah take take note developers if you if you're going to release an early access make sure you're readily available yes so um so other than that like i i i'm assuming you highly recommend this one as well oh, without a doubt i can't wait until the full game comes out it was so much fun just going through uh now you have your option to do uh, keyboard controls, that's not my thing. I prefer my, uh, I have an Xbox controller that I bought that I plug in to the PC. Works like a charm. Loved it. Plays great, Perfect. controls great. I had no quips at all with uh, how things moved. Nothing really stuttered, except for that one bug that I already mentioned. It played like a great game. So much fun. The the blend gore were uh, awesome as well. And you have an option to turn that off, kind of like the old Mortal Kombat two days. Oh man, the gray code? Yep. Perfect. Well, it, it, that does give me hope because whenever I do see a lot of the games that uh, have controller function on PC, they tend to eventually make it to console as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I'm, 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 I, I've actually like I wrote both of these down. I'm like future games to pick up. Excellent. If so, uh, thanks once again for uh, reviewing both of these for us. Uh, Let's Revolution, and then also Shadow of the Depth. Shadow of the Depth, we did uh, get a code provided to us from Renaissance PR, so thank you to them as well. Yes, thank you. Um, currently at this time, though, I don't believe this one is on any other platforms, but keep an eye out for it. So thanks, uh, Mark, for stopping by and uh, talking to us about some games. Ah, you're very welcome. Hope to do it again soon. Hey, Surprise, man. it was me. Oh my god, was it you? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, they're going to be What was it? That's going to be funny for them to come back to. I, you know, I'm not going to edit that. <laughs>
This is going to stay. Nope, good. not at all. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good job. What was it? I think Scott was doing an incredible CB impression the whole time is actually what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, if you want to chat with people like CB yourself, you can go over to the Facebook group we have at facebook.com slash groups slash the go cast. Or if you unfortunately, for some reason, want to talk to me, I'm over on discord, uh, which you can find the link to in our show notes or on our website at the gaming outsider.com recent edition. Welcome Victoria to 64 to the discord. Uh, Scott always wants iTunes reviews, so if you could review us on iTunes, that's fine. I am told it helps, but I don't know if that's true. You tell me. But but iTunes doesn't even exist anymore. Apple Podcasts, yeah, Apple Podcasts. is what I meant to say. <laughs> Why hasn't he... This is, I don't know. Here's a little sausage making for the listeners uh, that Scott would probably hate. Uh, <laughs> he, he hasn't changed what it says on the format in uh, years, right? Because Apple Podcasts was years ago, right? Yeah. Good stuff. But you can also yeah. review us on any platform that accepts reviews, like yeah. Google Podcasts and give things us, like that. Give us a mm-hmm. click the little star on Overcast, which means you'll recommend it to other people. That's that's the uh, podcast app I use, and it's awesome. You can also give star ratings on Spotify, but you do have to listen to a certain amount of episodes, I believe, before you can rate it. Oh, that's kind of a good system. Mm-hmm. I don't have Spotify, so I didn't know that. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. nice. It's what I listen to all of my stuff on. I'm a I'm a YouTube premium guy, so I just use YouTube music for music. Uh because I'm not gonna watch ads on YouTube. Just yeah, that's gonna, true. I'm just not gonna do it. Anyway. Fair enough. Smart. Uh we also write reviews sometimes at the gaming Uh t- right now we have recent reviews from David Newman for Jusant and Myth Force. And uh yeah, please read those. Now it's time to jump in. To our from the outside in topic. This week's from the outside in topic, we want to talk a little bit about pirating video games. A nice, cozy topic. No wonder Scott left. He, he always leaves, <laughs> he cowers his way out of the difficult topics. <laughs> There's no doubt. Yeah. I really hope this is yeah, nobody's. I, that too. I hope this is nobody's first episode because they're not going to know who the hell Scott is that we always talk about. No, I hope I hope there's a ton of new listeners this week, and they're just they're mystified. Well, I guess he is Scott Clark, and we are just the Gaming Outsider. That's, exactly. that's true. Yeah, but you could say this week you are Zach Parkerson, and CB and I are the Gaming Outsider. I would never do that. I would never make you guys less than me, unlike other Aww. hosts of the show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shots were fired. <laughs> that roast. But anyway, about uh, pirating video games, we uh, recently talked about how Apple is allowing uh, emulators on their uh, devices, and it sparked a lot of uh, conversation, so we thought we'd take a a little bit of a closer look at this controversial topic. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we've all more than likely downloaded a game we didn't actually pay for at some point in our past. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm speaking the truth, however, what games will you admit to pirating, Alyssa? Okay. So, <laughs> I've never pirated I've never pirated a game. Emphasis on game. Sure. So, uh I can't actually answer that one because I have never pirated a game. I but I have sailed the uh the seas before. Yar. Uh so I I will admit that yes, I have committed a sin, a cardinal sin. What's the most but, um, what's the most uh, outrageous thing you've stolen? Pirated, I mean. Uh, I really just have done movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. I and even then, but have you... I will feel bad if I enjoy the movie. I'll go and buy the Blu-ray afterwards. Yeah. No. Okay. It's reasonable. CB, you strike me as a uh, morally oh, ambiguous young man. <laughs> uh, so, already... It's only stealing if you believe in that kind of thing. Oh boy, this will be fun. What uh, what games have you pirated? Uh, that you will admit to here on record. Pretty much my entire PC gaming period. Oh my. Oh my god. Oh, I was I was a big fan of the of the Bay LimeWire the the showing my age. <laughs> LimeWire. <laughs> yeah, I remember LimeWire yeah. or Kazaa. That was big. Yeah. yeah that was big dude, when I was in high school. LimeWire was LimeWire. sucked. Yeah. yeah, dude, because I, I was where it was at until they got shut down, of course. C- CD keys 
for those sure. for those of us old enough to remember that. Hey, that's still a thing, by the way. Uh, yeah, now it's a legitimate business. Yeah, it's a legitimate thing. All right. I remember when it was not. Yeah. But I I find this topic hilarious because he's like pirating games. He's like emulation. I'm like, eh, is emulation really pirating? Because most of your emulators, you have to build from the ground up. Well, if you can hold on one second, CB, that's the next question. We can get into that. I, I, I know. I, I just wanted but, to know what the big sexy PC games you sold was or pirate, uh, pirated. Half li- like pretty much the entire, well, Half Life, Half Life Counter Strike, Blue Force, uh, Opposing Force, Blue Shift. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, a lot, a lot of the earlier games, but but here's the thing, like things like Doom. Like I remember when Doom was freeware. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. So a lot of those early PC games, like back when I played on PC, freeware was still a thing. Mm-hmm. So. Makes sense. But yeah, I I may or may not have a couple letters from my ISP <laughs> still floating around somewhere good. telling me that I did the naughty things <laughs> and my internet would be shut off. Wow. Well, um, well yeah. as, as for me, I'm actually I'm closer to Alyssa uh, in that the only time I have pirated a game was Super Mario RPG for a bonus episode of this podcast or uh, yeah of a of a retro outsider or whatever i did with scott years ago and then the the only game i'm gonna pirate again is probably the lone ranger for another bonus episode so scott turns me into a dirty little thief uh <laughs> that's god's fault now the lone ranger i feel less bad about because i own an inbox nes copy mm-hmm. uh, so so i feel you know there's some more gray area there as it were yeah um but but yeah, no, I feel I still feel bad about Super Mario RPG, even though I had played it before. But uh, I just don't, I don't know. I don't find PC gaming comfortable in general, uh, unless maybe I had a better setup. But so so emulating games that weren't even meant for the platform is kind of obnoxious. But CB, you want to talk about uh the more of the gray area? So what are your thoughts on pirating games? Mm, is there a time? Mm, I live in the gray. <laughs> is there a time where it's okay? <laughs> is it always wrong? Or is there always going to be that gray area? The gray Jedi himself, CB. Sorry, to say on it's this? in in my opinion, no. Because here's the thing: emulators to me, you built it from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Like majority of them are, and somebody built the ROM from the ground up. So it's it's something. Because that look at a certain lawsuit going on with well, former lawsuit with Billy Mitchell and all that. Is there a difference between arcade and MAME? Yes, yes, there is. They're built differently, they play differently. It's not the same thing, it's in the likeness of. So, you're saying these ROMs are in the likeness of the games, but not necessarily the games? They don't always function exactly the same way. Oh, interesting. Hence, hence the reason majority of them cannot be used for speed running competitions or, uh, like competitive gaming. Cause it's not the same. So how do you feel about, you know, like someone wanted to download God of War Ragnarok as a ROM. A, re- a recent one for a recent release. Is that okay? Or is that too new? Uh, I have different moral standards mm-hmm. than many people, but um, I, I and I I do believe like if I if I wanted to play a Nintendo game on my PC, it is not available on my PC. So if somebody had made it, I'm going to play it on my PC. Even though presumably with your library, you own it already. I I do, but if I'm saying if I wanted to play it on my PC, right. mm-hmm. and I didn't own it. So I, 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 I'm okay with it. Um, do I think it's stupid when somebody makes an emulator for some, like I made an emulator for switch to play switch games. Okay. That's, that is blatant piracy, right? That's still an active living Mm -hmm. console. Like, um, that, that one I'm, I start to get a little like, 
dude, you can just go out and buy the game unless it was a game that, um, the, the, the one game that Devolver Digital made, they're like, this game is physical only. It will never be available digital. Oh. So you can't get it anymore. Yeah. I can't remember which game that was, but I know, I remember what you're talking about. Can't think of the title though. So if I'm okay with that kind of piracy, like 100%. I'm okay with, like, it's no longer available. That company doesn't make it anymore. Pirate away, kids. Do it. Because Do at it. that point in time, to me, it's game preservation. Yeah. You are mm-hmm. you are bringing something back from the dead. I certainly hear where you're coming from. I am. I am 100% okay with that. Now, if you are to, like... Oh, look, this brand new game that just released yesterday, and you actively go out and pirate that. The older I get, I'm not okay with that, because the people who made that game, they got to make a living, too. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's but if of- it's something that is not available actively on the market, go ahead, man. And it is, it's a little tricky, because these companies are trying to take advantage of you every second, but they're also... It's also the arts, you know? I don't know. It's such a... My morality is is betwixt a hard, rock and a hard place, but I'll talk about it, that later. It, I mean, it, it bothers me when you have companies like Nintendo specifically, somebody makes something that they don't even offer anymore. Right. Anywhere. And they're like, but you pirated it. I'm mean, like, are you actively selling um, Galaga on the Nintendo right now? No? Mm-hmm. Okay, then shut up, Nintendo. I like that yeah, saying might- that uh, somebody came up with uh, a few months ago of, uh, if buying a game isn't owning it, then stealing it. Or then pirating it isn't stealing it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can- 100% for it. I, I, yeah. We got, a, we got a French Revolution in it, and I is this, uh, <laughs> this situation. I, I still hate that that clause is on so many of those end license user agreements. Yeah. But like, uh, you don't actually own your console. You're just renting it from us. Right. I couldn't. Um, oh, boy. Some legal YouTube channel. Oh, boy. I cannot remember the name of it. Was talking about those e- EULAs and how. Basically, the enforceability kind of depends on state. Like in California, there's no way they could enforce that you don't actually own it, which is cool, but it just depends on state. It's just something to... State and country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because... Sure. The, the, the current one mm-hmm. uh, in PlayStation, it does not exist. That that quote does not exist in the EULA in the US, mm-hmm. but it does in the UK. Yeah. Well, I'm an American. I can only speak to the, <laughs> the American's perspective. So, but it it does bother me that a company will go out of their way to put that in there because somebody has to type that, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Ah, oh, I love being a dirtbag." <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> so do we when we pirate your sh- your gonna... stuff. Yeah, your close stuff. Call, kids. Close call. <laughs> uh, yeah. What What about you, Alyssa? Are you a dirty rotten thief, or what's uh what's your story? <laughs> I uh I pretty much agree with CB. Um if a game if you can't find a game anywhere, like you can't buy it on a console right now. Um if it's an older game that, you know, you can only get it on disc or cart, but it's like prohibitively expensive. You can only get it through like eBay or gaming conventions or something. Go ahead, pirate it. I mean, if you can't get it anywhere else or if it's just outrageously expensive to own it, I don't have a problem with that at all. But again, like, if you're getting a game that just came out yesterday, a week ago, um, that I have an issue with, because again, like CB said, these people need to, you know, make a living, uh, you, you know, like, nowadays, if a game flops, that could be people's, like, they could lose their job from that. So, right. I well, don't... Yeah, they, it could kill a whole studio. Yeah, so... I don't agree with it if you pirate a game like right after it comes out, but I'm totally for it if the game is not available to purchase anywhere or, you know, it's extremely hard to find. Um, 
I'd rather people play it and experience it than just let the game fade into obscurity. And I'm the same way with like TV shows and movies too. If you can't find it anywhere, it's not available to purchase, or it's just an outrageously outrageously expensive price, go ahead, pirate it. Um, it's better to experience it than again let it fade into obscurity. Uh, I do feel I do feel dirty if I ever pirate a movie. Um, I try not to. But sometimes you can't avoid it, um, like the circumstances I said. But if it's possible, I do try to rectify it by purchasing it afterwards. Uh, but sometimes you just can't. Um, so in that case, I think it's perfectly okay. Just pirate it. But again, if it's a newer game, don't. I mean, I know it's hard, especially in today's economy. Like, games are expensive. But hey, hey, we can you- always wait for a price drop. Right. E- even with movies, it happens. Look at uh, Dogma. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, it's you can't find that. It's not streaming anywhere, and trying to buy it is so expensive. Well, th- thank you. Uh... Oh God, I I I just want to say so many bad things about Weinstein. I, you, oh yeah, you can, that's the you, only. You can pick on him. It's okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, but but I'm trying to stay family friendly. Oh sure, yeah. okay. Because that's one of the only reasons that movie is not on streaming. And it, well, he's be, he was being petty about it, right? Even before his fall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know and why. I don't know the story of that. It's it's because it's one of the most popular movies that Kevin Smith ever made. Well, therefore, and he's like, and so he's just like, oh, well, because you don't want us to make X amount of dollars off of it, I'm not going to release it to you. Mm. Or into the uh, ability to be streamed. Weird. So it stays in limbo. It's a good movie, though. It is. I've never seen it. Oh, it's so good. I guess I'll have to, you know, go sailing again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be the pirate. Yeah. But I do recall uh, when the movie, talking about movies, I know, gaming podcast, uh, the movie Hush, I don't know if you guys saw it on it. Netflix, Mike Flanagan movie. Netflix just removed it one day, and it was their, you know, Netflix original movie. Oh. Uh, Mike Flanagan himself went on Twitter and said, hey, if you want to watch Hush, I have no problem with you pirating it right now because it's not on disc. Netflix removed it. No one else is streaming it. He said, go ahead and pirate it. Removed it from the Netflix in the U.S. Yes. If you know how to sail VPNs, you can watch it on Netflix yeah. in other countries. That's so that's even weirder. I guess just to get an American tax write off of some sort. Yeah, there's I don't like know. some stupid, like, oh yeah. It, I mean, it boils down to like tax purposes or like, oh, we don't want to have to pay for this movie to be there. That's so. But weird. we don't have to pay for it in other countries. It's I mean, the fact it's... the director himself is like, just go ahead and pirate it if you're in the U.S. Well, it reminds me of uh, what Gabe Newell said about piracy, where he's just, uh, piracy is an accessibility issue. If you give people the mm-hmm. legal means to buy something, they will. The majority of people, you know? Yeah. But it, but if you, don't, if you don't give people a way to watch Hush, then what other choice do they have if they want to see it? Yeah, there's no other way. And that's with games, too. Like, games that you can't buy nowadays, either digitally or physically. How else are you... Are people I, gonna play it? I mean, come on, man! How I just want to play Flappy Bird. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that one. Yeah, dude, that was great. He took it down himself, right? Because he was overwhelmed by all the attention and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's also. I mean, that's a weird yeah. One. Like Flappy Bird, PT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, PT is at least you didn't pay. At least nobody paid for PT, I guess. Well, yeah. True. Yeah. You just can't play it unless you somehow have a PS4 that still has it installed on there. No, I no, there are ways. I have it on. I have it on my PS4. How about that? Well, Scott meant, did. You know, PS4 legal died. ways. Oh yeah, dude, I forgot about that. Yeah, Scott. Scott had a legit copy, and his PS4 went kaput. Well, it's like you can't have PT. Last, <laughs> it's like we're gonna kill your PS4. <laughs> last I checked, I still have PT. Who knows what could have happened in the in the interim. Uh, with as for me, I'm mostly with you guys. There's a lot of gray area. If if you can't get the game legally, then who who is there to even be mad about it? Well, see, that's you're like you can't get the game legally. Well, if you can't get it legally, like 
I mean, if it, if it doesn't exist out there on the open market, is it is it still illegal? Yeah, and I'm not going to – and mm-hmm. I guess you always have the option of secondhand purchasing, but the market is so broken right now that that's, that's oh, just sure, not yeah. a realistic avenue. Yeah, look, look at the thousands, legitimately thousands of games that were lost when the Wii U and DS store shut down. Right, and, and mm-hmm. piracy – Saved those games. Yes. You know. Thank you, you beautiful pirates. <laughs> but, but like, as with you guys, I mean, if you're stealing stuff, a game that you can buy on the PlayStation Store, and you're stealing it, then, you know, or pirating it, then that is stealing, yeah. Because then you're just doing it because you don't want to pay for it. Or, or mm-hmm. I guess you could use the excuse of, like, well, I can't afford it. I'm like, well, then I guess, I guess you just have to play something else then. You know, that's just, that's okay. You can play it later. What you yeah. do, you are stealing, and it's not something yeah. like if somebody steals groceries, I say more power to them. I get it, man. Life's hard. Mm-hmm. Whatever, steal that Snickers bar. I don't care. They're gonna be okay. You want to steal Crunch Bar? I actually say that's an act of valor because uh, Nestle uh, is a pretty <laughs> terrible company, dirty company. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're you're that's a heroic act. Um, I don't know why you would eat a Crunch Bar. There's a lot of better options out there, but uh, just as an example. So uh, there are things I'm. I'm fine with stealing. You want to steal from Mega? You want to steal from a pharmaceutical company? Well, I'll tattoo your name on me. You're a hero. <laughs> don't, get, don't get a twist. But uh, when you're stealing like art, and I understand a lot of it is being made by giant you know, mega corporations, but uh, the, the majority of it is still coming from a writer, a director, actors who are putting their heart and soul into telling you a story. And it's, so many of these stories are the things that inspire you and, and you know become aspects of your personality even, or do you know uh make you want to put it you know fruits basket i see your tattoo right there Alyssa. somebody made yeah. fruits basket and and it meant so much to you that you put it on your body so the idea That's true. so the yeah. idea that people would just be like well i'm just going to go ahead and read the manga online as opposed to buying it is just uh just kind of scummy to me and there are just so many ways mm-hmm. you you can go to a library you go to hoopla you know a digital library like there are there are so many legal ways to also get it for free that I just yeah. don't understand why you need to steal video games or other stuff. And there's also just so much stuff out there. Like, if you can, if you really like, let's say you're in a position where you can't afford Baldur's Gate three and you really want to play it. I mean, there's just so much more out there. You don't need to steal it. Yeah. And if I, people, people I, I think it all boils down to just still that is it available? Right. Mm-hmm. Like for for me, like I I think we're we're all in agreement on that. If it's available out there and you have the ability to purchase it, you should do that. Right. But I think any one of those writers, graphic designers, or anybody would all be in agreement that if you cannot physically get your hands on it to consume it or enjoy it, right? Even all of them would be like, do it. Yeah, like Mike, like the Mike Flanagan example, mm-hmm. or uh, or or if uh, you know, uh, was it Nintendo with Super Mario Three D All Stars, where they just arbitrarily decided you couldn't buy it anymore for no reason? Steal yeah. it, just steal it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you gotta do? It, even 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 a lot of stores were like, you know what? We bought these physical copies to sell in our stores. We're not removing them from the shelves all because of your date. It's so weird, man. Because so many, like, I, I saw a copy in the store the other day still. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that was one of the scummiest marketing moves Nintendo's done in a long time. Mm-hmm. For no reason at all. Just, I guess, try to replicate the Disney vault, maybe. Just a hype sales. In the dumbest way possible. It, it worked. I know so many people are like, this is so stupid. Well, I bought it, though, just in case. Oh, I, I, love I always the hated it, the it, Disney vault thing when I was a kid. I was like, no. Don't put it in the vault. It's going back in the vault. Why? I have to go get the VHS tape now. And, and then the what DVD. happens is, like, licensing rights. And then it comes out again. <laughs> well, no, like, licensing rights, and they're like, oh, yeah, sorry, because this license ended on this, we can't actually release that film again for a while. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, hey, oh, man, what's with all the, the music rights issues and video games that happen so often? It happens in movies, too. Yeah. Wayne's World and Stairway to Heaven. Is that right? You've never noticed that? 
Well, no, I mean, I've noticed Stairway to Heaven. I just... No, 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 no. Watch any copy of Wayne's World. What uh-huh. he is playing is not Stairway to Heaven because they legally cannot play it. Oh. So unless you saw it in the theater, okay. every version that has been released to the home markets or on streaming or anything like that, uh-huh. he's not playing Stairway to Heaven. Wow. No, I haven't. No, I wonder if my brain just auto-filled the memory because I haven't watched it in you know, it's such a weird chord too. It's like ba ba ba, and it's like, like anybody who is like, that's not stairway, right? But they still point to the it's, sign, right? Of the no stairways, yeah. Which which makes the joke even funnier, yeah. Because they're like no stairway. That's so, so like even the movie can't give you yeah. stairway. <laughs> that's true. No, oh. I don't even, I don't even own a gun, let alone many guns that would necessitate an entire rack. <laughs> Wayne's World's funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I guess I guess we're mostly in agreement then, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's be so a pirate. Weird. That's weird. CB and I usually, you know, usually fall on different sides of things. There's no debate this week. Yeah. Oh, oh there's yeah. there's no debate because we are in agreement over the fact that things should be enjoyed. Right. Enjoy them, kids. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's jump over and see what the community has to say. Zach's just so struck. He's like, I, yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to. We all agree on something. Yeah. I told you, it's, oh, my, it's my villain phase. <laughs> your vi- in, your <laughs> villainy is agreeing with people. I think we're all entering our villain era right now. <laughs> uh, CB, why don't you take the first comment uh, from Facebook here? Oh, well, Kyle Boggs writes in: Pirating creative content is never okay. Look at all the indie studios, artists, or musicians who don't have millions. Pirating can easily kill their creative outlet. I completely agree because like it, it's still them, but at the same time, if I don't have access to your stuff, uh, how can, how can your, how can your genius ideas be enjoyed if it's not available? Yeah. I've never understood wanting to, to pirate things that you actively enjoy because, because you are hurting, you're hurting them directly, but you claim to be a fan mm-hmm. of the thing. And then, and then this the the person who's pirating is probably going to be annoyed when the you know the show doesn't get renewed for season two or whatever. And it's like, yeah, man, you're part yeah. of the, you were part of the reason. Yeah, I mean, if if while the if while the content is available and you're pirating, yes, you are a dirtbag. Yeah, it's, t- it's tough to justify, no doubt. Melissa, do you want to take the uh, next comment here? Of course. Joel Selinsky writes in: Nope, the devs deserve to be compensated for the work they did. Piracy is never something that is okay. Same reason it's not okay with movies or music. And Tim Pollan also commented on Joel Selinsky's comment saying, couldn't agree more. It's still theft any way you color it. Wow. We got a good community. Just a bunch of good people around here. Mm-hmm. Sean Coates writes in, uh, I'll admit I'm a little conflicted. On one hand, I harbor an eat the rich attitude towards the big publishers who nickel and dime their player base at every opportunity they can, as discussed in last week's topic. On the other hand, I understand piracy devastates the small indie devs, so I suppose my moral compass is driven by on a case-by-case basis. Then there's a third hand regarding re-releases of classic games. We have publishers that flat-out refuse to re-release classic games to modern systems, despite the clamoring by their most loyal fans who eagerly pay money for it. Surely we all know who the biggest culprit to this phenomenon uh, is. Cough. Nintendo. <coughs> Nintendo. There you go. I'll, I'll act it out. In that case, I say it's open season. Yeah, or or um, I think it's a pretty good case for uh, games that are you know only released in Japan or something like Mother Three, mm-hmm. where where they just it's just them being stubborn at this point because you could even pay the fan translation people to just use theirs like they did for the Trail series uh, and, and release it as is and it doesn't it doesn't even take any effort on Nintendo's part other than you know a little a little money. Yeah, well, I mean. Especially at this point in time, because I, I'm willing to bet even in Japan, Mother Three is not accessible on Switch Online. I think they didn't. They just announced it. But, I'm not but, sure. I think the last but, few months, I'm saying, like very, very. But recently. there's so many of those games that are Japanese exclusive, yeah, or even European exclusive that aren't available anywhere else. And and I guess, you know what, uh, that's a good point, because there are some Japanese games on the Nintendo Switch Online over here in America as well. Like, I think the first yeah. Sin and Punishment mm-hmm. game, which was only released in Japan originally. So yep. they have the capacity to do this. 
but they just won't with Mother 3. It's out well, out, outside of a very few select games. Almost I, I almost any of these companies still have the masters. Right. For them. And have the ability to be like, "Boop, look, we made a digital file release." Except in like the case of Pens or Dragoon yeah, Saga. Well, yeah, he just had to he had to put the knife yeah. in my heart, he had to bring it up. <laughs> it, it, but it's sad that all these com- like all these companies legitimately could make everything available. Their entire libraries, all of them. Mm-hmm. I'm I, to this day. I'm still surprised somebody just doesn't go buy a copy of Panzer Dragoon Saga and go find some of the old dev kits because they do exist. I've seen them. Pop that disc in and figure it out. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I feel like there's got to be a way to do it, right? Th- well, I mean, the there fact has that to we. Be. The fact that we data mine so many things out of all these other games, yeah, there there has to be a way. They can't tell me that that source code is gone forever. It's yeah. there somewhere. Although I guess they did try to do it with Silent Hill two and three. Oh no, because those HD remasters were a disaster. But I guess um, they lost the master. They lost the code of the final game, but they still had like beta code. And that's why. Yeah. And that's why it was so bad. Is because they just like basically but at the same time, unfinished you, code. You said it right there, though. They took the original source code and they tried to HD remaster it. So you're mm. changing the source code. Yeah. I don't know. It's a. Uh, yeah. I, I just don't know enough. I guess we're, I'm not equipped enough to know what the hell these companies are up to. The Panzer Dragoon one does hurt, but uh, I know maybe I should just fire that one. It's the only way to do it. And yeah. uh, they, and uh, mm-hmm. I know a couple years ago they finally figured out how to do the Saturn multi disc stuff on emulator. So. It's entirely possible to play now. It is. Huh. So, all right, we'll move it along. Yeah. Brandon Smith writes in, I just build my own version of the game if I want to play for free. Modern problems require modern solutions. In all seriousness, though, if a game is not available for purchase from any normal outlets, I have zero issues with piracy. Beyond that, don't ask, don't tell. You're a beautiful man, Brandon Smith. <laughs> man after my own heart. <laughs> and I mean... I guess that's what my whole thing started with, with my collection, was because there are people that want to play these games, but don't have the ability or means. Mm-hmm. Like, for, like I said, for you, Zach, like, Web of Fire, when would you have ever had another chance to play it? Right, yeah. And I got to play it uh, on mm-hmm. original hardware. So, I mean, if, if I was smart enough to figure out how to convert all my stuff to digital, I'd be like... For everyone, because there's so many of these games that people will never get a chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand. You're, you're preserving history. Doing the Lord's work. Yeah. All right. Well, so you want to get this next comment here? Of course. Andrew Jick writes in, if it weren't for the media available on the high seas, I wouldn't be able to access any of it or afford it. Uh-oh. He's going to be mad at me for my earlier comments. Can't afford it. Oh, well. I like how it, the first couple comments are like, we're good people. And then we've just devolved into, <laughs> yeah, we're all pirates. Yeah. I don't know. I just, uh, I can't afford all of it either. You know? Well, neither can I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, I just, I just got my uh, annual raise at work. It doesn't even match inflation for the last year. So, uh, you yeah, know, times are, uh, Times are rough. I understand all over. And you need an escape. Oh, yeah, for I sure. get that. But I just feel like there's so there's so very much stuff out there. XCOM two is on sale for three dollars right now on the PlayStation store. You know, there are affordable ways to play games. I guess it's just not always the newest ones. It it's the FOMO culture we've created. Yeah. Yep. Which is terrible. I hate it. I hate I hate FOMO being used in marketing, man. So obnoxious. Yeah. I do too. But we did to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Well, if I just uh, stop talking to human beings in general, I'll be fine, right? I mean, that that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> I only talk to you guys, and I'm okay. Yeah. I don't really suffer from FOMO anymore because I don't talk to anyone. <laughs> yeah. You, you I don't get spoiled. You can't be afraid so. of missing out what you don't know exists. Ignorance is bliss, no doubt. Yep. 
Izzy Cosio writes in, I, f- I pirate anything I can. I buy what I enjoy regardless if I pirated it or not. All right. True I, pirate. Really, I admire your, your brazen attitude of just uh, being an open and happy thief. That's fine. Hey, you know what? I, I will not shame. I will not shame. I'm not shaming. I, mean, I, I was just identifying. No, I won't either. That you're a thief. I know. Right? Like, there's no... With that, uh, in the words of Dr. Manhattan, without condoning or condemning, I understand. Mm-hmm. I understand, too. And like you said, I also buy what I enjoy, even if I pirated it. So, But, but like you said, time, times are tough all over. Mm-hmm. It's That's just a, if Izzy downloads a game and falls in love with it, uh, I guess I guess I guess they're buying it regardless if they enjoyed it. But I was going to say, you know, yeah. if you pirate a game. And you're mad that it doesn't get a sequel. That's partially your fault. To, to, here's the thing, though. Like, how many games can legitimately be pirated on an Xbox or a PlayStation? I don't know. I'm I don't know, curious I, about that. I don't know. Yeah, like, I know that. I know Nintendo. That out. The Switch had an emulator, right? But I don't know of any like big emulators for the Xbox or the PlayStation. So it just seems like a Nintendo and a PC problem. Yeah, man, maybe you're right. Apparently, just play play on one of those consoles and don't worry about piracy. Hmm. See, so you want to get these last comments? Yeah. on Facebook. Oh no, we got more. We got more. I said on Facebook. Oh, on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. Jeez. Well, first off, <laughs> L- Lord Kevin Honigford, the second. That's right. Great. Right. Keeper, keeper of all things Sonic. Shadow's right hand Want- man <laughs> <laughs> wants us to know. I think pirating games is wrong, so long as it's obtainable and playable via standard methods. Once that's not an option, though, it's no longer piracy, in my opinion. This is why he and I are friends. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brandon Smith also tags on. This reminds me of an observation I saw somewhere recently. Given the growing trend of digital content providers removing access to previously purchased content on their platforms, <coughs> Sony, uh, <laughs> if purchase is not ownership, then piracy is not theft. Yeah. I mean, that is a compelling mm-hmm. argument. No doubt. It is. Yeah. If that, if I, that is, they stole it from me. I'm stealing it back. The piracy. I don't think you came up with the, the purchase is not ownership. The piracy is not theft thing. You know? Well, no, no, I know. But he, he put that in here as a quote. Oh, but what okay. I'm saying is if, if if they took the content off of mine that I paid for, right, then I'm stealing it back. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not even stealing. You're just taking your stuff back. Yeah, yeah you paid for it. So. Oh, no, no, I will use the stealing. <laughs> if, uh, I, I will flat out be like, you stole it from me, I steal it from you. Yeah. Two negatives it, sometimes equal a positive. I mean, if it's <laughs> the game these companies want to play, we got no choice but to play in the only way we can, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, let's jump over to Discord, Alyssa. Spencer Cushing writes in, I'm one of those pirates. Arr! My wonderful pirate impression. That was there. great, yeah. Uh, I felt like I was yeah. back in the 15th century. <laughs> but mainly for movies and TV shows. I have my own NA- NAS drive at home that my family uses, including a few outside the house. So if I think it's okay to download video games the same way, yeah, go on ahead. Just don't get caught and torrent the right way. When I was growing up, my younger brother and I tried that on a game, but didn't have a VPN and didn't torrent properly. Found out that the internet provider, Comcast, we had at the time, shut us down completely and my mom had to deal with it on the phone. She eventually found out it was us. Oh yeah, God. Spencer, I've been there too. I like that Spencer's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's like the hub, he's the central hub for the thieves. He's sharing it with everybody outside the house too. Yeah. My God. I mean, there's there's more of those than you think. Well, you know, if you set up your own Plex server and you're downloading your own movies to it and sharing it with your friends, that's different, <laughs> right? That's just sharing with your friends. Yeah. Sharing's caring. <laughs> yes, sharing is caring. Yeah, absolutely. Mark Zemanski writes in, I am 99% against it. My lone exception is if you already own it. Example, Scott has a little Samson in a sealed box. Obviously, he doesn't want to open it. So he plays it on an emulator. No other exceptions, period. Every single one of us would be angry if someone else stole what we had put our heart and soul into creating. Why should it be acceptable for games? 
Yeah. But Mark, if I can't get it. But I won. Okay. But here, here's part of this though, podcast. Like, I'm giving you all free reign. You can just pirate this yeah, free podcast it. all you want. <laughs> see, like right here's another word. People are like, oh, you can get it on the secondary market. But on the secondary market, who's it benefiting? Right, usually just dirty yeah. scalpers, right? And dirty also, scalpers it's and greedy companies. It outrageously expensive too, so it's even more unaffordable. Yeah. See, I I would be more in favor of liking GameStop if, as they sold a second, like a retail, co- like somebody sells sells them a brand new copy, and they're like, "Cool, we resell it, but we give one one or two percent back to the original developer." Dude, I sure. would be like, GameStop, you're my hero. Hey, man. I would support that. I'd be like, sure, I will sell my game to you for a quarter if when you resell it, you're giving partial profit back to the original developer. How is that company still in business? I don't know, You, wa- you walk in there, it is just depressing. Because they take advantage of... Young people? It, young people and ignorant parents. It's just There's so many Funkos in there. Yeah, the store here is basically just Funko Pops, T-shirts, plushies. And a a little section of video games. Yeah. Yeah. It's in a corner. They're dying. Yeah. Good riddance. It's hard to feel bad about it. But then again, there's there's not exactly a rise of resale stores anymore either. Mm hmm Yeah, that's true. Darn kids and their digital only empires. I hate it. I hate it. Yep. What uh, next comment there, CB? Uh Bill Gardner writes in if it's not available to purchase without being secondhand, I have no issue with it. Even if it is secondhand, you shouldn't have issue with it. <laughs> the developer gets yeah. none of the money anyway, so there's no issue in my eyes. Pirating games that you can Go to a physical or digital store is where I draw the line. If I want to play an older title that I'm not able to buy from an official retailer, I see no issue with emulating. No want me to emulate your game. Let me buy it. <laughs> Excellent English. Yeah, no, he's with us. Yeah, if it, he's saying if, it, if it's not available to purchase without a secondhand sale. Yeah. He's saying don't mm-hmm. do those secondhand sales. He gets it. Yeah. Bill understands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just, oh, uh, I'm, I'm heated, man. All right. Your villain arc, I remember. Okay. Alyssa, next comment. Let's get, we got to get away from the heat of CB over okay. here. Doc Sampson says, being an old, <laughs> I had a Commodore 64 for my first computer. And if you weren't downloading cracked ROMs, you weren't doing it right. I'd say 98% of my collection and time considering how long it took to download anything using 1200 BPS modem, were pirated games. After that, though, not much, really. In fact, I don't think I'd ever download a cartridge-based ROM until I got a Raspberry Pi several years ago. I honestly don't see the issue with it for games that are out of print or even just unavailable from the publisher. The makers of those games aren't getting paid for them anymore, it's just the secondary market. Yeah, I mean, I agree, I mean... Yeah, he, no. secondary, it's just scalpers getting the money from the secondary market, not the developers. Absolutely. Uh, and then to finish it out, Thomas Beck says, "When I had a C64, all I had was cracked games. To be fair, I didn't know any better. Once a month, my dad would come home with a couple of cassette tapes filled with games, and I got to sort it all out. It was an amazing, it was an amazing experience, to be honest. Only much later, when I was playing on PC and had much more income, did I start buying the games I wanted. Nowadays, I don't pirate anything anymore." Okay, first off, that is your dad pirating. That is not you, so don't feel bad. To, to be fair, back then... Yeah. But, I mean... Sir, like, growing up, like, I remember, like, my Apple IIe, again, showing my age, there there was times, like, you go to a store and nothing was there. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't... Like... Pirating back then was a lot more tedious process. Like you had to find somebody who had the game and the same type of system and the ability to copy the disc. Like that pirating back then was a whole process. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, the Dreamcast, right? It was just straight up. You could put it on a CDR. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny. 
that I feel that that's part of the reason why the the Dreamcast died as hard as it did. Because it was so easy to pirate. It sure didn't help. Same thing with the PSP. It was so easy to crack. Yeah. Terrible. And the Wii. Oh, really? I didn't know that about the Wii. Oh, the the Wii and the original Xbox? Like, you could straight up software mod those. Well, I remember the original Xbox because X-Play straight up, like, had a segment once of how to do it. (laughs) I mean, I I still have a cracked Wii at home. Like, at my house. For those that didn't know, I'm not at my house right now. Um, but yeah, like he, where it was, is he? It was straight up You'll just never a, know. <laughs> I know, pirate side. The mystery. But like it was like just put this USB stick in. Boop, flash drive. Insanity. There was there was somebody at uh, GameWorks that would do that real fast for you. A uh, former Rockford local video game store. Yes. Oh, okay. They're dead now, right? Murdered? Oh, long dead. Yeah. Long dead. May they rest in peace. Well, no. Okay, <laughs> Let it burn. I take it back. I rescind it. I remember. I, I enjoyed working there, but that was a scummy company. You know, I used to go there when I was like 19 and 20. I wonder if we, I wonder if I ever saw you and just didn't even know it. Probably. Yeah. Alyssa, this company was so scummy that they actually knew homeless people that lived in Rockford and actively encouraged them to go steal games from Walmart <laughs> that then they would be like, oh, man. oh, that brand new title that you just stole from them will give you $5 per and then they would just turn around and sell them as unopened sealed games. That's pretty scummy, man. Okay, I take it back. Rest in HE double hockey sticks. Yeah, th- th- they were a scummy company. No, but we did. all enjoyed working there. They did have a collector's edition of Mark Echo's Getting Up that I wanted for many years, though. So that was cool. Anyway. Did you ever get it? No. Oh. I had money. It's okay, Alyssa. When, when they fired me eventually, because my now wife won a competition from them, and they didn't want to pay out, all the games that I had borrowed, including the consoles, may or may not have been returned. <laughs> well, you know, it was your reward. Well, that's enough on crime. Let's get out of here, guys. Uh, thanks for everybody that wrote in uh, to our lovely topic. Less controversial than I thought. Scott had no reason to be afraid and run off to Colorado. We were all good. <laughs> uh, but uh, next week's topic, uh, inspired by Fallout, no doubt, we'll be talking about the next great TV series. So stick around for that. Well, that will do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. CB, it was lovely to have you back. It's always good to be here. Is it really? Or are you lying to me? Yeah. No, I'm I I enjoy being here, man. All I right. like it. Yeah. And Alyssa, thank you for being here as well. Of course. I always love being here. I love bugging you guys. Thanks to everybody else for listening. This uh episode of the Gaming Outsider was produced by Kevin Honigford, and all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry. Of Stemage and Metroid Metal. His music can be found at stemagemusic.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Alyssa, do you have a Korean recommendation for the week? I do. Kevin really needs to make a sound to be played every time I have a recommendation yeah, that we, is Korean. We need to get Grant um, to do intro music for your Korean segment. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's Alyssa's Korean Corner. Yes. Yeah. The Korean Corner. Um. I watched a K drama called It's Okay to Not Be Okay. It was wonderful and amazing. Loved mm-hmm. the themes and messages. It does center around mental health. Um, my favorite character is the autistic older brother. He is amazing. Um, but everyone in the cast is wonderful and it's just visually beautiful. There's it's about this woman that's a fairy tale children's book writer. But all of her books are very dark, and she doesn't really feel emotions. But then she meets this guy, and him and his brother, who's autistic, and he's taking care of his older brother. They're constantly moving because they had a traumatic event happen, and they haven't really processed what happened. So they end up becoming like a chosen family kind of situation, and they help each other heal. And it's just, it does make, it. you, you do need tissues, you will cry. Um, it's just a really wonderful look, though, at, 
you know, trauma and how that affects us and also the hope in humanity. So it's a really wonderful show and it is a Netflix original series, so you can only watch it there. But if you have Netflix and you want to watch a K-drama, it's a very good one. A lot of people, it's one of their like beginner K-dramas they watch, but I waited because I, I don't go by typical rules. I should have watched it sooner, though, because it is definitely something that really impacted me. So I highly recommend it if you want to see it. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. The, you had the, I approve both the message and the show title. Unfortunately, the premise seems a little far fetched if it has hope for humanity. You know, it just seems. I don't know about hope for humanity in general, but like hope for individuals. Yeah. Who are struggling. Under, understood. See, you've been gone a while. But what? Oh, you, man. Yeah. Do you, have, you don't want me to run down my entire list of like all the TV <laughs> that I've watched. Let's pick one thing. Is there something that you, you sticks out in particular? You know, I will give you. Two things. All right, I'll all a, t- a TV, a TV, and a movie. Okay. okay. Um, first off, uh, I finally got around to watching a TV show that Scott recommended called The Newsroom. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeff Daniels. I have not seen it, but I, I am, do remember him. I am. I uh, I binge watched that entire TV series oh, and realized I love Aaron Sorkin. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Because that, hands down, is probably one of the best TV series that I think I've seen. I mean, even that uh, that early speech about America is well, unbelievable. That, what a way to kick off a TV show. <laughs> yeah, yes. And I'm just, like, I was, I was hooked. And I'm actually pissed that the show got canceled. Mm-hmm. Because I legitimately think that more people would take an interest in news if that show was still on. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, it is, it was almost ahead of its time in that way. It because sort of, what, a, what a great way to digest not only, like, current affairs, but realize, like, how the sausage is made. Right. Yeah. True. Because that show was brilliant. Number two, for a movie. The movie. Godzilla, X-Kong. Really? It's okay. Okay. I'm not I'm not going to recommend it, but I'm not gonna say don't watch it. Okay. Like I'm I'm firmly in the middle. Like you know I'm a huge, huge Godzilla fan. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Um I'm I'm not quite sure where I sit on this yet. Cause to me it's not as good as um Wow. I had a brain fart. King the, of the, the Monster. Last Godzilla. Oh, God, wait. Oh, just Godzilla versus Kong? No, 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 no. The, the, the actual, like, total. Oh, Godzilla minus thing. one. Yeah. Yeah, Godzilla minus one. Uh, it's not. Like, Godzilla minus one to me it was the return to form. Yeah, no doubt. Whereas this is just like, we felt like making a big CGI spectacle. Yeah. Um, The Scar King. For the hype was the dumbest, most underpowered, horribly utilized kaiju I have ever seen. Oh, man. Like, uh, it, it was du- like, uh, oh, oh, that it, it that they could have done so much more with that character. And I just I was like this. Gimp, like it just stupid. The the way that ended was terrible. See, so Shannon, if they Shannon do another some, uh, Godzilla rage right now, if they yep. do another in in said series, they they have they better redeem themselves because like Ghidorah, perfect. Like that that one, even the Mudos felt more powerful from the first Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Like it, this was just. <sighs> The ma- the big bad was a letdown, right. but Godzilla still looked awesome. Still had Godzilla, yeah, yeah, pink Godzilla. Oh, so does that does that identify its gender? No, is Godzilla a boy or a girl? Did do we know Godzilla's what you want it to be? I know Godzilla was a lady in the American one that everybody loves because she laid eggs. Was it? She laid eggs, right? I don't K- know. 
How do you self-fertilize eggs? You're right. Godzilla gender. is hermaphrodite. Gender is a construct. I apologize. Yes. I should get with the times. How, how dare you assume Zilla's identity because that <laughs> is not Godzilla. You're right. Well, the, correct, the correct one for the 1998 TriStar is Zilla. I do remember that. That is not Godzilla. <laughs> how dare you disgrace my kaiju. <laughs> um... <laughs> I guess I, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow CB's lead and do two two recommendations. Okay. First one pretty quick. I wa- I rewatched the Planet of the Apes prequel trilogy this past week, and uh, those are exceptional. In preparation. Films. Yeah, yeah. We've uh, been pretty excited for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, it's a movie I'm gonna have to see alone because no one uh, around me cares about Planet of the Apes. But uh, I'll, I'll if, see it with you. If, if I, I had closer. the ability, I would fly it out because I am a huge Planet of the Apes fan. I appreciate. Yeah, it. I love I those love movies. Yeah, I love Planet of the Apes. It's good stuff. Uh, who doesn't? I mean, it's hard. It would be hard to watch most Planet of the Apes movies and not like them, right? Yeah, you would think so, yeah. but apparently, no one around you likes it. Well, so. that yeah, these people are all fools. But this prequel trilogy is is just uh, it's really great stuff. Andy Serkis' Caesar is unbelievable. Uh, yes. Toby, I forgot how great Toby Kebbell as Koba is in yes. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It's uh, truly special. The, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, so it's like the, it's, uh, the Dark Knight of Monkey movies, man. It's so good. Uh, big fan. So yeah, those are great. Those are actually, they're better than I even remember them, So which is uh, all too rare occurrence in life. But it was phenomenal. You, sh- you should go back and watch the original five. Yeah, well, the 1968, I've never actually seen any of the 70s uh, ones. Oh, so you have the, all, the, all the Roddy McDowell's other than the original? Yeah, I've seen the, I've seen the original a bunch of times, uh, but I just never, I guess I never knew anybody, anybody with access to the originals. And I've never, I've never, well, I, <laughs> so of course, like, you, I have of course you see me, of course. Uh, but I've tried to, I've tried to bid on the, because they did a Blu-ray collection a few years ago, but it was such, it like sold out really quick. I. I might actually have a second copy I could send you. Well, I would I would pay you for it because I I always lose the eBay bids for them. Let me I'll 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 text you after we get done here and I will let you know if I have an extra Blu-ray because I I know I have it the the box set for the DVDs and the Blu-rays. Okay, and I even have all but two of them on Laserdisc. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. You're you're pretty deep on the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Uh, but the prequel trilogy is great. But then uh, another movie I had never heard of before called Red Sun from 1971. Starring Charles Bronson and Toshiro Mifune from Seven Samurai. Uh, dude, that movie, this movie is awesome. It's a cowboy to samurai teaming up to get back a, a stolen sword, basically. And it's the cowboy's former partner who betrayed him, so they both got beef with this guy. And it's just, uh, it's basically, it's like a buddy cop movie of this cowboy kind of and the samurai. I remember reading somewhere that that was like somebody's original idea for, um, Oh, that Owen Wilson, Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, it feels very uh, Shanghai Noon. Uh, it feels yeah. like Shanghai Noon took a lot of cues from this movie. Yeah, good old good old Charles Bronson, too. Yes, I, di- I didn't realize he could be so funny, but he's really funny in that movie. Uh, just a lot of comedy of, you know, the American trying to act like the tough guy and just getting trounced by this Japanese samurai who's, you know, be- beating him down calmly or just outsmarting him at every turn. It's just... Uh, it's really good, but not in a way that plays it, you know, he doesn't like, Charles Bronson's not an idiot in it, he's just at a disadvantage for most of the movie. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, it was just, it was a ton of just fun. And it was a lot of, it was just really great. Yeah. Big recommendation to Red Sun, if you could find it. It's, uh, it's available free on YouTube. But that's, uh, that's, uh, that's us, guys. That's a wrap. Until next week, I'm Zach Parkerson with Alyssa White and Chris Behrensmeyer, and we are The Gaming Outsider. Because Scott Clark's not here. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you. <laughs> <laughs>